actual be seen and you can see and we were just talking about welcome back everybody soul coughing uh yeah. i really enjoyed them i liked them i saw them a couple times live uh and then they just sort of went away yeah that was that that's why i was wondering because they were huge. well mike had a little heroin problem and they broke up and then he went solo for a while uh, and i think he still does some solo work uh, he does sing uh, every song uh, like this. Uh, <laughs> it's so it's true. Uh. <laughs> well, uh, that, uh, that band is so old. It was on an episode of Homicide. Oh no! It was a TV show. <laughs> yeah. Oh no! Hey, Duke. Hey, thank you. Hi, Duke. Thanks for hanging out, friend. Um, we appreciate it. An old TV show. What was that? I hate that. That's an old TV show now. Homicide. Yeah. Yeah. But I fully realized that when my my mother got it on DVD and we put it on, you know, our fancy new high definition television, and it looked terrible. The mm -hmm. makeup is yep. just so. It was not made for high definition. Yeah, it was not made for high definition, right? Oh, that is always weird to see thing like I watched um, for about five seconds. I watched. Um, uh, What's the show with um uh, David the movie with David Bowie and the Babe and the Labyrinth? Yes, watching Labyrinth <laughs> on HD was just like it was weird. It looked like a <laughs> telling up. No, and you did get to see some contours of things that just you know I don't know. I, I just I, I just wasn't into it. It was a little little bit much uh, for mm -hmm. for the big screen, let's say. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this is the Cthulhu. I think it might need the big screen to contain it. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it was definitely, yeah, more of an odd piece. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> yeah. so um, this is the, this is contrary to the conversation, the Cthulhu <laughs> Awakens Kickstarter. Uh, end of the Kickstarter campaign, um, celebratory stream Arama. And clearly we are a little punchy. <laughs> right. <laughs> Cue yeah. the rock flute. <laughs> I haven't even had a drink yet. I was right. so close to building on the labyrinth joke with some I, things that were definitely in the too soon realm. Uh, I'm, I'm glad we just went. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but now I'm curious, and so no. <laughs> um, look at that successful kiss, 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 kiss your kiss Kickstarter. Um, look at that successful Kickstarter. Um, we are oh, so close. So close. I mean, yeah. Uh, one it, more. This is, one more stretch goal. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And we were now when we uh, before we were so rudely um, occluded, um, <laughs> we were uh, talking about um, the differentiators from our time that we're all hanging out in and the the timeline that people get to sort of immerse themselves in. And you were so we have, so nicely. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have a big single conspiracy. Right. Um, you know, we have implied many small conspiracies and maybe a couple of big ones. You do need some big ones for like, you know, uh, massive underground cave systems that contain ancient cities and things like that. Right. Um, or a whole era of history before the history that we know. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but really, if you go back to the source material, if you go back to things like in the mountains of madness, right? Like. You know, uh, the assumption is just that, like, there's somebody somewhere who knows about all this mythos stuff and wrote it down and it is filed in an obscure library somewhere. And if you read a lot of the fiction, right, it's not characters are not always the first to discover what's there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, they'll go, oh, this is a thing that's, you know, I remember from this time that I read something in the Necronomicon. Or that had been written about the Necronomicon. Yeah. By everyone else, right? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of that. So yes, locally sourced organic conspiracies. <laughs> so we don't have a so yeah, we generally avoid like singular big conspiracies or singular explanations because really that setting you know, that's an aspect of the setting that is best left to you. And that actually gets to something the policy that I decided on today. Um, no, good. Adventures. Uh, like literally just a couple of hours ago, uh, I have decided that, uh, you know, we do have a definite setting of Cthulhu Awakens with specific, uh, characters and organizations and things that are 
in Cthulhu Awakens in the Weird Century um, and are unique to it. Uh, however, um, adventures are not canon going uh, forward. Uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. An adventure, finishing an adventure does not like, we don't assume that you finished an adventure and therefore the world is updated. Adventures are indeterminate. And also it's something that I came to think about when I was uh, working on Ian's notes, because again, the difference between running an adventure and writing an adventure is that you can rely on that kind of improvisation um, and your ability to totally control the experience because the, the game filters through you when you're running it. And one of those things is the ability to come up with big explanations for things or make, you know, big moves in the setting, right? So, uh, for example, in Revelations of the Bacchae, there are, you know, some ideas where a certain artifact called uh, Passenger's Orrery is, um, and there are a couple of other things. And I don't want people to think, oh, you know, uh, that artifact is in that location from now on, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I want them to do whatever they like with it. So this one is happening, right? So there may be an exception someday if we do some epic campaign thing. Um, but I think everybody who has been in gaming for a long-ish time um, as a hobbyist has seen the attempt to uh, reboot through narrative, right? Mm -hmm. The one I remember is, you know, the transition to second edition AD&D. Oh, yeah. Yes. All the assassins are dead. All the mm -hmm. assassins of Forgotten Realms are just dead. They died. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we uh, we have attempted to do that uh, to a degree in our Freeport setting, because um, that started with three adventures, mm -hmm. uh, you know, now known as the Freeport Trilogy, uh, you know, which end with, uh, you know, the characters preventing the summoning of Haster essentially. Um, and so because we did that before we did a city book and people who knew Freeport knew it from those adventures, you know, um, we wrote the first city book to be, to just take as written that those adventures have been played. Um, and that's something that we have uh, continue to do through various versions. We'll advance the timeline by five years, which can be useful. You know, it can help you phase out some things that you're like, eh, and put in new things and all that. But, um, you know, the problem now is if, uh, if someone gets one of the more recent Freeport City books and then the classic adventures to play because they're new to it, um, they, they don't really sync up well. Um, they whole structure ah. of the way the city is run and all that is uh, is a little different. You know, Chris, I was just going to ask, do you get a lot of sort of pedantic sort of people coming up and saying, then I, then I forgot, I'm sorry, we're, we're talking role play games. Of course you do. Um, <laughs> and, but, um, but Hey, I, you know, I, this is a nice little segue. Um, you know, we did release um, Freeport on our VTT um, yeah. over on roll 20. And uh, that was done uh, largely by um, uh, our good friend Jonesy. Mm -hmm. And Jonesy is running a Cthulhu Awakens um, stream and uh, I wanted to uh, bring him in and just sort of chat with him a bit. Um, Jonesy is one of those interesting cats that is kind of like uh, he's in that in between place of like a, like a, a a great fan and a pro and all of that. And so I'm, I'm a little jealous of the of the uh, place that you occupy, Jonesy, primarily because you get to do all the things and then you know and then make remarkable you know professional contributions to the uh to the industry and so like how can you be both luminary and you know having fun like i just that's I thought that's <laughs> not supposed to be the way that we're, that's not supposed to be the way that works um but uh but i also want to say jonesy um thanks for joining us by the way i'm going to pop you over to um and i so i wanted to just kind of dig into what it was that you uh were running stream wise and talk to me kind of about how you set it up and uh and you know know i don't want you to give any spoilers but um you know uh how how do you plan to uh torment um the uh, folks who are playing sure um sure so i don't have anything planned so uh this was a last minute hey <laughs> so just a casual um, join us having fun 
So yeah, so uh, I knew the Cthulhu Awakens was coming up. Uh, I got the opportunity to get a, kind of a preview of some of the role systems thanks to the team um, and definitely wanted to do a, a game for it. I reached out to our channel because our channel does a lot of m, &M games and said, hey, people, anyone want to play? And I had like more than <laughs> most of our cast and then some of our, our regular guests go, yeah, yeah, me, me, me. So I actually had a tough time getting a smaller size group. All right, that's nice. Uh oh, you're uh, outgrowing. Just... You're 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 overgrowing with your popularity. That's right. Make difficult um, decisions. <laughs> so yeah, so we decided we designed it as a. I knew I was going to overwrite, so I told I didn't normally do a one shot, but I'm like, this is going to be at least a two parter because I overwrite. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I just planned ahead. I'm not like Alex. I don't. I, I did plan ahead for it to go more than one episode. <laughs> Um, Shots fired. Wow. Uh, and Alex got to play in it, which was really cool. So, oh, yeah, um, fun. That's fun. So, I got to tell, I told the players, hey, it's going to be modern day. I need you. And I kind of give them a little blurb like, you know, you're, you're from the King, uh, Arkham Kingsport region and gave them some guidelines, but left it pretty open for them as far as who, how they designed the characters. And it became quite obvious that two of the players were like built to read the evil latin as i, I jokingly call it um <laughs> read the tomes and if they were grad students at miskatonic i'm like well you're asking for trouble um <laughs> and uh yeah so the, the behind choices the were made the choices yeah. were made yeah so behind the scenes i i'd always wanted to do this uh, kind of idea about the players being more than human uh i guess this is a, a kind of a callback to I played way too many White Wolf games at the time, but would you say it was like <laughs> more human than human? Really, more inhuman than human. Um, more inhuman than inhuman. But I've always thought the idea of like someone playing someone that's you know part deep one or part something was mm -hmm. kind of cool. And um, and so I'm flipping through the, the notes that Malcolm was kind enough to share with us, and I'm like, oh, inhuman legacy. That's that's a given. So I gave it to all the players without telling them. Um, ah, yeah. that's so great. And this is what I love about the whole conceit of this. Like, it's just really, really go on. Yeah, that's and great. So, uh, so as the first game is going on, it kicks off with someone uh, off screen villain casting an Eldritch working, uh, and it goes wrong and it starts triggering those latent inhuman legacies. And what so, what do you mean I have guilt? <laughs> yeah, and so I was doing a lot of, a lot of hinting at things like, and one of the players, um, could see in the dark because they were touched by uh the formless spawn and one of them could was a ghoul and uh, it was really cool and so we ran through a little scenario where they basically had to figure out a way to stop it because it was going against they they weren't getting because they were leveling up they were getting it because it was just a ticking clock <laughs> and right they started sprouting extra and extra abilities and like yeah we don't want to become deep ones and ghouls we would like to stay mostly human and so uh i basically had a, as a chase scenario basically running around getting the pieces and parts to figure out how to do a reverse engineer the ultra trophy so interesting yeah yeah that's cool that's very cool so now you've done one you have another coming or uh, well the first two parts are done they're going to be yeah, uh, yeah. they're going to be edited and put up on youtube um and then the players all were well you said two parts but we like our characters so <laughs> um so we're, there's talk about us doing a couple more like you know one two part shot uh, follow-ups as we and i figured well they're going to be promotions when the book goes to uh, pre-order there's gonna be promotions when the book that's comes right out. and that's so right. i figured that would, that would be kind of cool do a couple other follow-ups with the, with the, the well you know Jim, i gotta say your support and your you know uh um thinking in these terms is just so appreciated and so uh valued and it's just really great and you know you're always a, a voice of like we can do it we can get it done let's do the thing and and i you know uh as part of the vtt team i think you're the best with the spreadsheet um yeah. That, we, that we've got. <laughs> I'm the worst. <laughs> and I, yeah, I I really appreciate that. And and uh, you know, we had the same experience on our stream in that people were not wanting to stop. And so we're talking. Ian just pinged me just moments ago saying, "Hey, we should probably talk about what we want to do with this with the stream thing." And I was like, "Yeah, we should," because uh, they really enjoyed it. We had a great time. The mythos is just really fun to play around in. And, uh, and it really, I mean, yeah, it's, it, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a vibe, um, much like <laughs> our background music, but, uh, but yeah. So, um, Joji, do you plan on, um, on being like, are you, is this something that you're going to, you know, dabble in as part of your, your sort of menu of games that uh, you've got? 
yeah 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 definitely i'm, I'm a huge uh horror fan i'm a huge uh, cthulhu fan uh have been for years uh my my husband jokes that i find a way to slip cthulhu into anything or anything i'm running um yeah uh, but uh and i already submitted uh, a couple scenarios for origins and gen con um that's right yeah yeah uh, so one of them i'm running fantasy age at origins and gen con but the other scenario was was uh my initial notes for a possi possibly a cthulhu awakens game it was slated as modern age but it definitely had a cthulhu awakens vibe to it uh, this is had to be submitted in january so i was just like well just write it as if it's cthulhu mm -hmm. and i can just drop in if i have to i can convert some monsters but in this case i don't have to i can just you know. that's yeah, awesome it doesn't, it doesn't take much at all um and also like the enemies and allies book is something that you that you get when you pledge <laughs> Yes. that's right that's right yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, you're I, on point i know yeah. right uh hey, all real... of them are compatible with the uh with cthulhu awakens and they require maybe 30 seconds of conversion oh hey uh real quick <laughs> i want to uh jonesy this is uh jonesy Jonesy and Chris, this is your good work. Um, uh, this, uh, Dwayne said he ran the Freeport 5e adventure on Roll20 and uh, had a blast. Awesome. And they want more. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. And Sean, thank you so much for that uh, for that kind word. Uh, we had a blast for sure. Um, I wanted to say real quickly, um, I've got, uh, you know, I, I talked about it earlier. One of the most amazing things about doing, you know, community building and stuff online is that there's always someone out there that's a really great artist. And so uh, our buddy Stan has put something together for us. I just want to, it's a video, actually. This is the first yeah. time he's ever done a video. And I, I didn't get a chance to listen to the audio, but I trust him that it's probably just a <laughs> string of expletives. But um, let me, uh, let me go ahead and play that. Um, you know, we'll see, we'll see what comes up. Ready? Well, there you go. Uh, there we go. That is yeah. the best. It is utterly the best. Thank you so much, uh, Stan. And I think that Stan, that's probably the um, that's probably the piece of art that put us right over into the. Um, you know, let's check it out. Let's see what's going on. Um, it's so small that we can barely see it. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Okay. Not that. Change from the next stretch goal. All right, you see, that's um, that was all because of you, Stan. Um, thank you so much. Uh, if you can just make us three thousand more pieces, so that we can get there. <laughs> <laughs> Stan says uh, he did not have time to make it obscene. Um, let's not give let's not give anyone any ideas. They'll start to you know. Uh, regarding the um, the previous comment, Freeport is going to be done for the age system um, after the uh, well when the Fantasy Age Four rulebook comes out. So okay, um, nice. That's yeah. great. Yeah, you know, and and we we're getting that VTT system uh, down, uh, the the processing of that good stuff, and um, yeah. So with some exciting things on the horizon, I'm uh, uh, looking forward to uh, you know getting more stuff, uh, more stuff actually all over the place, and not just roll twenty, but we certainly love roll twenty. Um, Dwayne says thanks, Chris. You are welcome, Dwayne. <laughs> Indeed. All right. So what? Um, okay. So uh, I, I did want to um, get a sense, uh, Malcolm. There's, you know, something you had said. Uh, you had talked about sort of the, uh, and we've even hinted at it. And I might just be like, you know, spilling all the beans and ruining the plot. So if I am, just feel free to tell me to cork it. But, oh, is this the Simon Omicron thing? No, well, no, no, it's not. I was, I was. That's a good one too. But um, I wanted to to get a sense of the. Uh, of the you know looking back into to the way back past um you know I, i'm remembering that there's something pretty significant about this world this timeline that that people will be kind of you know exploring the mythos and all of that is that correct or am i um you know huffing well, maybe i don't know yeah <laughs> <laughs> i okay. mean there there are millions of years of alien yeah. races trying to colonize earth so yeah you know. I, we <laughs> that, that rates yeah we yeah. do is yeah the setting does structure the sort of prehistory that is generally accepted as a thing um in in the cthulhu mythos into you know there are sort of two basic prehistoric periods and the first is 
when all the aliens show up and try and colonize and reshape the earth um and uh that is this huge thing and of course you know in the the public domain stories you know um that's talked about in you know at the mountains of madness uh and a number of other ones and the kind of second period we have is the history the human history before history right and you know that is you know there is this bronze age and a bunch of kingdoms and a bunch of weird deities and and all of that stuff that happened before our you know normal uh 10,000 years roughly before present uh start of people living in cities right so we uh we basically assume that that weird prehistory is true um that's talked about in a lot of stories yeah. and if and among other things that also gives you a possible avenue if you want to run you know straight uh kind of bronze age or pseudo bronze age uh fantasy you know in a world that will eventually become the uh cthulhu awakens world in a uh, world and i guess other than that i mean the other thing is that you know the the yithians are trying to make sure that we just live long enough to wreck the earth enough to make some really intelligent cockroaches in the far future <laughs> for them to jump into so <laughs> we're, real close. we're real close we're real close <laughs> the roaches are getting smarter um they're yeah. renting apartments the uh, renting apartments great yeah just getting their well, credit I mean, established anyway. <laughs> <laughs> i think i think for them the ones that are affordable now are spacious, right? So true, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's why it's such a New York thing, right? <laughs> That's yeah. right. Some um, packed life forms will succeed there. I wanted to uh, real quick, Jonesy. Thank you so much for popping on the stream. I know you're like, what? But uh, you know, it's uh, always an adventure around this place. But uh, thank you for popping by. And I want to um, uh, encourage people to uh, look for that VOD when you're um, uh, when you're done with those edits and stuff. And where will they find that and you online? Uh, we're over at Untold Stories Project, uh, which is on. YouTube. We're also on Twitch. We stream uh, every Monday night. Uh, we stream Mutants and Masterminds on Monday night. We're getting ready to start a Star Haven campaign where I get to play a swashbuckling space pirate. Um, hey, cool. Looking forward to that a lot. And uh, and then on Tuesday nights, we're running the Emerald uh, Knights campaign as part of our City of Destiny stream. So Okay, yeah, that's great. I just I, I came across that and, and started watching it. Unfortunately, um, you know, our streaming schedule is getting packed, which is exciting, but also that's a lot. Um yeah. and uh yeah, so I just want to be able to check out some of those VODs and, and how long has that stream been going on? Has that been a long is that a did it just start or is it uh, been a been a hot minute? City of Destiny has been going on for several months now, so it's, it's yeah. not not quite the year-long stretch we did for another war right uh, right we just wrapped up recently uh but uh it's definitely uh i think they're like on um, three now i'm like they're about halfway through it so right on well so if folks are uh, watching this on demand i want to make sure you're paying attention to the chat because i've dropped the link to the youtube channel so you can oh. subscribe and give all the thumbs up and all that good stuff and uh but jonesy thanks so much for joining us i appreciate it of course Have a great all right time. i'm gonna keep watching the countdown too because i want okay. to eventually to get unlocked so yeah. <laughs> right yeah yeah we do too awesome thanks <laughs> Josie. bye um that's great um and uh you know that that whole crew over there is so much fun and they're they're just really they're doing the streaming thing and um uh you know our streaming calendar is really sort of outrageously packed right now like we have something maybe two things almost uh, every day of the week uh going on and that uh, that doesn't include the mutant semesterman's monday and and our uh thursday age um where we'll be able to talk about more cthulhu stuff because we you know here we are um i'm uh also wondering you know uh jonesy actually it was interesting because i i think that we uh in my mind i don't do enough of the connecting of the age um, products are the age lines they they really complement each other like we can do you can do uh blue rose and you can do uh modern age and fantasy well, one, age. one thing i wanted to actually uh mention to 
to Jonesy while he was here uh, oh. was that uh, is that like assigning an extra talent degree that focuses the group is like a really super common house rule in mm. age games. It is so common, in fact, that it was basically made a core rule in the by by Owen in the uh, in the new Fantasy Age core. That's right. right. That's right. He you mentioned start that. right out with a specialization. So, and when I was playing threefold, um, just my my friend, uh, my friend Steve, who is not Steve Kenson, but another fine Steve, uh, is our is our usual game master. So he runs Modern Age and Threefold, and I play in it. Uh, and one of the first things that he did was like, you know, everybody gets a free talent degree and, uh, and you're going to take Wander Soul with it, right? Wander Soul is the thing that lets you find gates, which are, you know, pretty essential to doing plane hopping in threefold. If you want a heavy plane hopping game. Um, and so just seeing that replicate itself with, I want everybody to have a level of a human legacy right yeah the degree of in human legacy you need to see that tactic kind of replicate itself through three games um and it's recommended you know giving everybody a common talent degree um especially at first level since there are no prerequisites is a super good way to bring people together you can also do it with things like bonds and stuff but sometimes having like a power that is not a niche power necessarily um or variations on a common theme like things where people don't feel like they're stepping on each other's toes but it gives them something in common i find it's really useful yeah i like that um you know so the um uh i just heard and i'm not even certain if we have mentioned it because i feel like we've done three streams today um <laughs> But um, if you, uh, so we were, uh, Ian was the GM for our, um, uh, the revelations of the, Bakai, you say Bakai, you say Bakai, Bakay, what do you say? I don't say, know. Well, you, well, <laughs> well you say, say the don't word. Don't make me figure out what a word is on the internet. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I just like the sound of it coming out of your mouth more than I, than when I say it. I sound like somebody's strangling like a chicken or something. I'm like, Bakai, <laughs> like it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I would that, say Buckeye, but you know, this revelation. Yeah. Yeah. revelation of the so let's not let's not have the Cthulhu Cthulhu thing. Oh, yeah, Nicole, like I was just thinking about that. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, there was yeah. one. There was one where oh, what's the name of the? I used this British actor, and he was also the weird fighter with lipstick in the Dungeons and Dragons movie. Oh. But he is in uh, like a loose adaptation of the Call of Cthulhu, where he uses he pronounces it Cthulhu. Cthulhu, jeez, I think. But I remember that movie. I think I saw someone make a GIF out of it. I was watching it just the other. <laughs> just kidding, it's GIF. Well, God dying. be praised. <laughs> <laughs> our uh, our good pal Torin Atkinson, uh, singer for Cthulhu punk band Darkest Hillside Thickets, he's always personal said, fave. Yeah, he's always said Cthulhu, um, which I disagree with, but he's still a good guy. <laughs> That's right. You'll still die for his right to say Cthulhu. I uh, agree yeah. to disagree on that. Yeah, it, it is uh, that it, it really just it's one of those things that it's actually more for me more irritating than the gif jif thing like <laughs> Cthulhu. It just sounds like you're sipping tea and having some, you know, discussion about the. Uh, yeah, and having the vapors, etc. But um, yeah, you never, you never know what people think sounds cool. Why like, is I'm that a link a bad of... link? Thank you, Sean. Words that start with B, I think, are inherently uncool. Like generally, I want words to start with jagged letters. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm trying to think of a of a uh... just the shape of it offense. Just the shape of it. And also, <laughs> right. like, if the word was a metal band, would it have a cool logo? That's the question you mm -hmm. have to ask yourself right <laughs> really? that's the standard by which we work <laughs> well, consider triumph versus boston yes, yeah. but you <laughs> I, your boston accent's coming out there how do you say it boost like <laughs> i didn't mean to do it that way i am not in the least bit new englandy yes, yeah. you need bees because without bees you can't have the bad brains 
So. Oh, that's true. You that's know, true. You don't want to take that away from punk rock. Oh, I there's be... an unlimited exception for bad brains. <laughs> ah, there we go. Okay, I like oh. it. I remember I saw them open for Faith No More. In, yeah. Not Faith No More. God, no. Um, a different band whose name I forget. Living Color. That's oh, the one. Oh, that's oh wow. Yeah, yeah they are different. different, but they were yeah. so ubiquitous. Well, the one thing that I remember is Bad Brains is up first. They were amazing. And then my friend pulls me aside and said, like, you know, what did you do about the guy? And I said, what guy? The guy who was punching you in the back of the head <laughs> for an entire song. I'm like, I didn't notice. <laughs> oh. You're like it's all part of the show, friends. It's yeah. all part of the show. Yeah. It's either it's either great praise for that band, or it's an indication that I should see a doctor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, because <laughs> you just I remember really it so fondly. Going back to music that has nothing to do with our uh, our mythos game. I love I'm, it. I love <laughs> it too. I love it too. I mean, I you know, and I mm -hmm. I love you, Nicole. And I just need you know, whenever Nicole's on stream, she just helps us like literally. So she, she will help us stay on track. There are times where I'll look in there and she'll be like, Troy! And I'm like, I just hear it in my mind for sure. And I'm like, okay. I uh, occasionally babysit. I love it. I love it. Um, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, so um, talking about the um, revelations of the um, the Buckeye and the um, uh, that whole adventure, the, we processed the stuff that Ian kind of put together, didn't we? kind of put yeah. it in a workable form. Do you want to well, talk a little it, bit about that? Yeah, like I said, there's a, you know, when you are running an adventure, often, you know, what all you're going to need is a page of short notes. And this is for a number of reasons. The first is that um, you know how much of the book you know, and you know what game systems you know already. Yeah. So generally you can do shorthand for them and you, you know, dump in anything that you don't remember well. You generally have a few key events you want to go through and you're kind of willing to play it loose from there, right? And you still play it loose uh, when you're actually running a formal set adventure. It's not like it's on tracks or anything, um, but there is more guidance as to what the structure is. And there is not an assumption that, you know, oh, you'll know about this particular thing, right? So that causes it to get a little longer. And also one difference is that uh, Revelations uh, was set up for a specific set of characters. And the original notes refer to them extensively and have hooks devoted to them. So part of it was genericizing those. So a future person can tailor it for themselves, right? So I guess it's that stuff. Yeah, when I'm running games, you know, like adventures that I've written for my home group, like I don't write it out formally. It's all bullet points, you know. Yeah. Um, and because I've written it, uh, you know, I know how to modify it on the fly, depending on what players do uh, without needing a lot of, of explanations. But like things are... Different. When we don't go to the X on the map, but go to the secret cave visibly where the bad guy is hanging out and yes him. in that <laughs> theoretical just, just not, hypothetical <laughs> could have pull that right out of thin air yeah <laughs> I, w I was running one of the adventures from uh an old freeport book called tales of freeport and uh in it this necromancer has been um seeding these fake treasure maps having people come to his island and then killing them and animating them um, oh. and and so uh, if you go to the X, you're walking into a trap. And uh, and my players were like, let's find out what's in that cave all the way across <laughs> this area, past where the X is. And that's where the necromancer was. And they just offed him. Um, so. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah, what did you do though? Honestly, we have this conversation quite a bit about all the planning that goes into creating, you know, the GMs working their just their fingers to the bone and getting all these wonderful encounters put up, and then suddenly the players find the shortest way to just sort of yeah. screw it all up. Well, you just gotta roll with it, you know, and uh, yeah, you know, reward them for uh, for <laughs> good thinking, I guess, lucky thinking. 
Yeah, I mean, that is kind of the, I mean, that's ultimately the advice is just like roll with it and have mm-hmm. some fun. And, mm-hmm. and you know, and, and what we have heard resoundingly is that when you relax a bit and you start to lean into sort of just telling a good story and having some fun, that it's, it's those encounters turn out to be the best encounters, you know, uh, that they, people talk about forever. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, that's great. I so, think a lot of the time there's this misconception that there has to be, this wall of silence about whether something is significant to the story or not that the players aren't allowed to know what significant to the story and what's a speed bump and things like that and i found like one of the things that has simplified running the game from running games for me is to just admit when i don't want to to be a thing anymore right (laughs) right right. so you know like so okay we're, we're done we're done with the jungle we're done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're just well, over yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, I'll I'll do that on like one of one of those powerful things one can say in a trad fantasy game is there's nothing else of interest in this room. Right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You're yeah. so good at that deadpan too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, I mean, I felt my stomach curdle a little bit by just just hearing it, and I'm not even playing in the game. <laughs> <laughs> You're I'm like, sorry. but, but, but. <laughs> I, I was playing in a game, uh, my early 20s, uh, with a game master I didn't usually play with. And we were just like way on the wrong track in this whole like investigation thing. And we were, you know, suggesting things that just were not correct. And <laughs> his way through that was to be like, okay, you do all those things and you don't find anything out. So. Let's move on. <laughs> and I was kind of like, "Wow, you can do that." That's... I I've definitely seen uh, uh, Steve Kenson do that same kind of thing. You really just don't see anything here. Like yeah. it's like move along. <laughs> uh, I love that comment. Oh, I know. Yeah, I shared that on stream. Oh, um, you're the you're the you're the type of person who made a spot check every a spot yeah. or search or whatever every ten feet as required. Mm-hmm. Like you worked with Templar, <laughs> I could completely see this. <laughs> I don't know. It seems like everything's okay, but I'm gonna worry about. Uh, I get it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, that's let's oh, see. I, I know people this... who have like procedural macros for that kind of thing, and sometimes it's actually useful. Like there's a friend of mine who has like he runs, you know, a traditional D and D style fantasy. So that means you know people romping about in the wild. So he has a camp diagram. Right, it's like this is how you're camping, right? <laughs> and, it, and it's all like, there. We go. You want to camp? Never done. Nope. Done and done. That's your camping. Instead of having the eternal conversation about who takes the watch every single time. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite. Uh, Templar's like, I stopped to listen and check for traps. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> and again, <laughs> still nothing. Um, I love that. Uh, you know, so what, this is actually, um, uh, Dwayne Costa brings up something interesting um, in a very long uh, post that won't actually uh, display entirely on screen. So I'm going to say, um, you know, so I really, it's interesting, and a lot of people didn't really get it or don't know that, you know, we've been dabbling in Cthulhu stuff for a long time. Yeah. From the get-go, you might say. From the outset. Yeah, that's great. And, um, you know, there's a a question here about there being any formal ties between Freeport and Cthulhu Awakens in that setting. Is there uh, anything we can talk about, or should we, you know... Keep it uh, well, you certainly could do it through demimons. Um, so, you know, we've got this idea in the game um, that you can travel to these like alternate earths or, you know, different places, cities that don't exist in the real world or are different from how they are in the real world. So, thank you, Stan. It'd be pretty easy um, to just uh, make Freeport Adventures part of that. But because these are both age system games, you know, you can take stuff out of um, Cthulhu Awakens and drop it into a Fantasy Age campaign very easily, um, and vice versa. So um, there, there may be some stronger linkage in the future, but uh, we'll, we'll have to see. We All have right, lab experiments. 
<laughs> that's, that's right. That have ended horribly, horribly wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Some misshapen adventures out there um, that uh, that escaped. But uh, but yeah, no, I love that. So you know, and that's one of the things that's great about what we're doing in general is that you know this these are meant to be tools to help you tell your own story and to make those connections and have fun with that. Um, that's that's great. Um, I am uh, uh, so I've got a I'm doing a quick post on Facebook just so everybody knows that we are an hour away and what do we have? Um, uh, let's talk. Uh, can somebody read what the, um, we're two hours away. We're two hours, two hours away. Sorry. We're two hours away. Um, sorry, Troy, you're not off the hook yet. I know. Right. Um, yeah, <laughs> I see 89,687. That's mm -hmm. the number I see. That's the number I see too. Um, yeah, and uh, we are hot on the heels of the next um, uh, uh, stretch goal. Stretch. Yeah, and and what is that? I'm not asking because I don't know, but I, yeah, go ahead. The 1960s adventure, I believe. It yes. sure is. I yeah, the 1960s adventure. It is indeed. We should talk about that for mm -hmm. just a minute. Well, that's Dulu in yeah. space. Well, it'll be what it'll be. Um, and it's going to be... <laughs> well, come on. I mean, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to try to incorporate some peak 60s. Um, right? In terms of what was happening historically and the general vibe. Without being... Without getting into parody, you know? Because the thing is, is that I... All right, so I have a tendency to be kind of humorless as a developer. Like, what? I usually put in a lot of notes saying, like, no, don't get rid of that joke, get rid of that pun, get rid of that reference, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that's because the humor always sort of builds itself. Um, you know, you don't basically, you just give people their characters and you run it, and then they will be dumbasses. Uh, and you will be a dumbass, and you will all laugh together. Yeah, and it's just kind of inevitable. If you start with a joke, um, except in some very specific cases where it's focus, where that's the focus, like orc, for example, right? Um, then it the the humor tends to be a bit overdone, right? Okay, that's my opinion. Well, as an aficionado of the worst humor in the world, um, you know, just in general, uh, I, I'm wondering, like, what what is a what is a good joke for you? Like, what's your favorite kind of? Like, are you a pun guy? Are you? Uh... Um, no. Your <laughs> mythology references. I'm the kind of person who doesn't think most comedies are are worth watching on a big screen. Ah, <laughs> for example, uh, I'm not a I huge. Like, I like deep cut historical jokes. That's yes, true. yes, you do. Oh, you yeah. do indeed. I guess yeah. I like humor that's on the drier side. Um, yeah, like I, I said, I, a deadpan. What I, I like. Pan. I like my 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 humor dry. I like it moist. I like it just sort of you know. I'm I just like it all. I'm a pan humorist um at heart uh for sure <laughs> um but i did want to say oh yeah you know jonesy uh, um was on here a little bit ago and had done some work on we actually had written a night market for blue rose and dropped some mythos nods in there so yeah that's fun i mean yeah we got a rich history of bad humor mm -hmm. and great you know and that's great uh, great things about blue rose just to completely wrench ourselves away from the thing we're actually talking about is uh is when i when i wrote uh the adventure that i wrote for blue rose which was my first thing for being um one of the things i really liked about the setting was that you know you have an idealistic civilization that is recovered from like really bad stuff right so you know, that cooperation and that sense of justice that, you know, that is part of Blue Rose, you know, comes from crawling out of adversity. But that, but those problems, like the the weird, bad, magical stuff, it's always just sort of in there beneath the surface. Um, and I, and that, uh, I was kind of happy to, to read about more of the same when I got my copy of envoys to the mount i'm reading it because i want to make sure it is not confused with the uh very similar sounding 
short story connection. Well, it's not that similar sounding, but <laughs> in general, we've had a tendency to just. Yeah. Tales so from up the... to the mounts with That's the right. envoy. Yes. 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 There, there's the big uh, adventure, uh, which is very cool, on Voice of the Mount. Then there's a tie in short story collection called Tales from the Mount. And so right. And then there's that other one. It's like, confusion in our internal discussions sometimes. There's like that third one that's like the Count from the Mount. And it, like, it just all of it's just very, very. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens. Like, <laughs> Speaking of, 688. 689, 688. Nice. Oh. Getting there. Getting there. Um, counting. Aha. Uh -huh, I love my mount. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nicely yeah, done, Nicole. <laughs> Wealthy Mythos fan Wales, now is the time to drop your 10,000 and change contribution. Um, if some to to bump our Kickstarter right over. Oh, to that six digits. To max so us out. 10,000 plus lying around. Yeah. yeah. Can you can you a place you could put it? The Kickstarter can just let you, you let you just do like I just I'm going to give them a million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, if you, you yeah. can do that if you want. Um, I like it. Yeah. When we were doing the uh, the Expanse uh, role playing game Kickstarter, I was very tempted to add an upper tier yeah. that was like, "Hey, Jeff Bezos, one million dollars <laughs> for you." <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you like the Expanse, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. You made at least a million dollars off the Expanse. Uh <laughs> at least. Uh, at least. If anybody dropped like a verified, like not pretending but you know if, if 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 10 grand landed in the hopper you know i'll go to your house okay <laughs> yeah. well, maybe i won't go to your house which would be <laughs> <laughs> either way now that i know you you're gonna have to pay me uh yeah <laughs> all right that's so, great uh, our friend uh, mike mulvahill uh, is an old facet designer um works in, in board games now at robin's burger um so when hairbrain schemes did a kickstarter for their uh shadow run video game um they had some levels that was literally like uh mike mulvihill will come to your house and run a tabletop shadow run game for you um and people ponied up you know like ten thousand dollars for that um and uh, really yeah Talk about pressure yeah and mike like yeah i hadn't actually run that edition in a long time so uh i was gaming with him at the time so we became like his um, get back on the horse group you know <laughs> yeah yeah Oof. i wouldn't well, want to have to provide ten thousand dollars worth of um entertainment yeah i yeah well no listen now the the three of you are famous i am um i'm a disembodied person i'm thinking ten thousand dollars worth of what i got to offer is a lot of like work like i, I did you just come in with charm and wit and tell a story and you know and i'll have to come in i'll be there for weeks <laughs> i mean i wouldn't cheap out if i ran a game i'd bring hand puppets oh yeah. hey that, okay and and so uh what's the stretch goal so <laughs> you start with uh, that's just kind of Ooh, the base well, level that, 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 <laughs> the money just goes I'm over just, the top you know when i was at right. Pax australia i got to participate in a puppet show in a hand sock puppet show so uh hey. you know, you're speaking my language i've got i've got experience in this Okay, see, we got a whole new plan here. We're gonna call it, this Malcolm Isn't it a Thulu. good idea? We like, should have thought of ahead of time, I guess. It's a it's a good thing that uh, that we don't have, uh, you know, Malcolm and I aren't on some thirst age type show because we would get ourselves into some trouble. I I'm think. just saying every stream is uh, canon. Um, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> adventures aren't canon. Streams are canon. Streams but are canon, what adventures are canon. What I wanted to mention, though, speaking of, of things like, you know, now that we're coming up towards the end, there are some things, there are definitely some things that I wish I'd done um, that mm. maybe I will do as the line goes on. And one of those is a lot of people suggested incorporating uh, the, uh, the churn from the expanse mm -hmm. or something along that same structure for pacing control. And we have that in modern age. And uh, is the companion part of the? Uh... Yes. Yes. Well, so you have those. You have those rules. 
um, but tailoring it to something more more mythos specific, right? The other thing too that I was thinking of are you know inspirations um, because there are some things that I've uh, seen. Like, has anybody seen devs? No, no. Like oh, the like working the people doing a job or no no it's a TV show um, by the person who directed <laughs> another movie. Uh, or that guy who did show, the thing. This, yeah, this guy. <laughs> You're pulling uh, a real Hewitt there, <laughs> Malcolm. <laughs> this guy, which is actually a thing that I think we list as an inspiration. Okay. Um, Annihilation, both the the film and the book, although they're very different. But um, the great thing. The sort of heart of devs is that there is a giant google-like corporation that makes um makes this tremendous discovery and the long-term fallout of it is that everybody loses their mind um because mm -hmm. they are debating whether or not this technology that they have which i unfortunately can't tell you what it is that's what we'll show um <laughs> like is is creating things that people aren't meant to know right uh not just because of their ability to like peer to certain things but you know they learn some things about the nature of the universe um as the result of, of looking at um computational physics um and mixing it up with a whole bunch of other sciencey buzzwords uh but <laughs> the thing that i kind of wish that i'd taken is that it is very much integrated into the you know west coast uh tech company startup culture which is something that i'm not so familiar with but is so influential culturally yeah so yeah I, wish I had um i wish i had prompted some more integration into that and sort of the the modern end of the game uh hey, interesting okay right I think they call that genre, um, that tech startup genre, the insufferable genre, I think is what <laughs> <laughs> The crypto bro genre. Um, yeah. I can't hear you, Chris. Sorry, I muted myself to type and then I was dumb. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, that's the sort of thing we could do in an adventure or a source book, mm -hmm. easily mm -hmm. enough, I think. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so do you have some other, like, as you're doing this, I'm imagining that you get a lot of sort of inspiration that branches off, but sort of has to wait for the actual tree to get, you know, grown. And, uh, um, are, you know, are, is there anything that you can share that isn't too, like, you know, and everybody knows when they watch these streams, we're lying all the time. So, you know, you can't bank on anything <laughs> that we say. Uh, but, but, uh, but, if you, um, but if you have any sort of, like, reflections on things or directions that things could go in the future based on sort of what you saw in the development process? Um, well, I have a lot of boring mechanical insights. Okay. It. I got to tell you, people <laughs> love, so, they literally, they write up and they're one like, of Hey, the, one of them is the utility of bombs. Um, yeah. because, uh, ever since I started playing with this concept and it's, you know, and its origins with relationships and finding out exactly how expandable it is. I think it is a, you know, it's so smart. Um, and I've been, you know, thinking about different things to do with bonds and, you know, different ways they can help out, but being able to just get extra performance out of a simple descriptor, um, is, you know, a thing you see in a lot of games. Um, but where it relates to us and i think it's kind of cool is that because bonds integrate with stunts right your relationship bond or whatever bond creates these points it's always about your relationship or belief or whatever always fuels something exceptional right because it's built into the thing that creates exceptional performance um mm -hmm. that creates weird and big things so I love that and I've been working on it a lot uh, in terms of what I want to do with it. Uh, the other thing, of course, was <clears throat> Fortune, which, uh, which Steve Kenson uh, devised for The Expanse. And uh, that is an optional system in Cthulhu Awakens. And uh, there are a lot of interesting things uh, I want to do with Fortune as well. 
um, okay. moving forward. I'm not sure it'll, if it'll be in Cthulhu Awakens or it'll be in something else. Uh, I think the other thing too is uh, I'd like to do more with found powers uh, instead of earned powers. In role-playing games, we do a lot of stuff where, you know, you you spend your character advancement on the magic thing and you have the magic thing that's on your character, right? That is a thing you know, right? Um, and in especially in traditional fantasy, uh, there's a kind of split between the magic you have and the magic you have access to, which is usually embedded in a kind of fire and forget external object, right? Like a magic wand or whatever. And in, one of the things I wanted to do in Cthulhu Awakens is create something that's kind of in the middle there where, you know, uh, it is a thing, you know, all the Eldritch workings, right, which are, our, you know, mythos spells are uh, are things that anybody can pick up and can attempt to cast as long as they have a source text to work from but uh if they you know practice hard they can get better at it but it's still open to everyone and i think i want to have more stuff like that hmm. nice you know jonesy mentions real real, real quick i want to um uh, give him a quick shout out that uh we are uh to what did you say jonesy to 32 232 away from um that's right wow that's well, great i see uh 127 myself 127 okay that means that uh that it's working um yeah. uh not this you know not the stream of course but that's what <laughs> we come to expect um that's right here we go i'm i it just takes a minute for the stream to to update but we're seeing that now right yeah yeah nice um, that's exciting. 99 yeah. minutes to go. And that means keep streaming at least until we hit the next stretch. Goal. <laughs> I, I, I just, we're just going to stream forever. We're just going to stream. Yeah, we're going to hit 90. It's like so long. Suckers. This is what we do now. <laughs> this is our, this is our new career. We just hang out and talk, uh, you know, about music, uh, Cthulhu and, um, you know, bad jokes. Sorry I've got a for your I've been saving for the end of this campaign. I'm waiting to open it. A beer, okay. No, I mean, I say drink them if you got them, right? I mean, there's no time like the present. If we if we cross to ninety, I'll I'll pop that one. I think I am uh, lighting a big fat joint. No, I'm kidding. I don't even smoke pot. Um, but it's legal here. It's fine. It yeah, but we yeah we you know we try to keep the stream um, semi sober. Um, if we yeah sort of sort of sober <laughs> always works. Um, yeah. So did you want to, um, so as far as, um, you know, talking about how, well, I, I, I won't, uh, open up this, uh, line of question cause I really want to get into the nitty gritty. People really do really enjoy the, uh, when we start to get into the weeds on, uh, on systems and discussing kind of the origins of things and, and how we came about sort of, uh, including aspects of game dev, uh, because they really, they really are into the, uh, the design intent and and getting in and kind of cracking the code on what that all means. Um, and this is for all three of you. We you know when it comes to getting a uh, tabletop role play game, um, you know, out the door, there are about a million um, moving pieces, and some of them are real cranky, um, myself included. You know, I mean, like you know, there's a there's a um, there's a lot of a lot of things that need to happen and a lot of a lot of stars need to align just perfectly to kind of get things out and sometimes even as perfect as those stars are it can be a little messy um let's talk a little bit about that like putting all those things together so i mean let's start with like malcolm you put the work in on on sort of gathering everybody that was going to contribute and what are some of the other things that you managed and let's just kind of walk it through the process oh oh what the process of development is um well <laughs> I come up with an idea for the book and I go to the people who own the company and go, how about I do this book? <laughs> and they make a positive or neutral noise. And, and it's noise, really. It's like a <laughs> or a ring, ring. <laughs> <laughs> or a man. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> okay, and then after, you, after they issue the, the noise. Top hat. <laughs> <laughs> understand which of his minions he's speaking well, to but, it gives you a wrap uh, on my head with his cane yeah <laughs> um so you know yeah sometimes has 
time for me after his conference with Mr. Peanut and other luminaries. <laughs> other um, other top mid luminaries, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Jiminy Cricket's there. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, is I'm the one wearing the hat here, and that's because I'm terrible <laughs> right now. But uh, all right, so yes, um, the basic concept is run through, and the outline is run through, and then I look for people who want to do the work, and I look for people who fit the project. Um, I kind of gradually find spaces for them and using secret internal, uh, special green Ronin formulas, I figure out how much each of them can write. Um, that secret oh. formula, by the way, is I estimate about 10,000 months, uh, 10,000 words per month for writing. 10,000 months for a word. <laughs> Sometimes it feels that way. It, it can gotta be, say. Right? 10,000 months. I'm going to make a vampire game only for vampires. <laughs> <laughs> um, and 98 bucks to go, says Josie. Thank you, friend. Draft pro then there's usually like a two or three draft process where they send me the first draft and I make red lines, which are do this, don't do this. I like this. I don't like this. And I send it back and then they follow the red lines. They do follow the red lines, freelancers. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then they send it back and I do the final development run. And uh, then... Um, Chris takes a look at it uh, to make sure uh, it's not bad, and uh, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then well, we, then, sorry, go ahead, please, Chris. Oh, uh, particularly if we're talking about an an age game, the adventure game engine. Yeah, uh, you know, I designed it originally, so I I sometimes have mechanical opinions about age stuff. So yeah, I think one of the things that Chris, you've been very helpful with is is like sometimes I do get into the like you know oh there was a you remember the three kinds of dice I suggested mm -hmm. yeah that wasn't a great idea <laughs> I had this idea that like you know when we have each die in the 3d6 have a different discrete function and then yeah. you can read them this way and read them that way and then I just realized that I was like constantly finding problems for this convoluted thing to solve <laughs> uh, <laughs> And you know, it's Chris, easier to watch one die. Yeah, yeah. Chris will have this right. easy. easier to watch one die. I guess <laughs> this could work. <laughs> he has a way of like writing things where there's kind of an implied ellipses. <laughs> right. And, <it's, laughs> and, what, and what is the expectation that happens once the ellipses is is once it, you the, know? Once, um, well, I mean, basically, I go through and I address all of them. Um, yeah, yeah. And then that creates a series of files that can be sent to an editor um, who mostly handles um, like uh, technical spelling grammar stuff, but also will do some stylistic stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. Right? It's sort of a weird thing that is specific to games is that the function yeah. of an editor is kind of split. Um, and one side of it is extended a bit to include more overt writing duties. Um, and then when that's all done, uh, that goes to a uh, magical elf named Hal, um, who I call this because I have no idea how that turns into a PDF. Uh, I have no ability with these things. Also, art somehow appears based on my rough notes that I am uh -huh. later told are incoherent um or involve putting too many figures in too small a space hey claude thank you so much claude said just just pledge um you're a real you're a real pal um mm -hmm. i appreciate it uh claude's a regular hangs out with us on our streams all the time Ooh. um but uh okay so now so the the magical art elf um uh arts all over the place and yeah. then um what if you get a piece that you're like hmm that's not quite what I'm looking for. Or, or how do you, how do you, back. you just send or it back. I, like I refuse. Yeah. Or Hal has a, Hal has a gentle, but firm conversation with me about my tastes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, like a whole, there's a whole process to getting art for a role-playing game book yeah. where, you know, the initial ideas usually come from the developer or the writer. Um, and then the art director in our case, usually Hal, um, will, uh, will, 
take those descriptions and you know try to put them into artist speak um, yeah. to a degree and then send them off and then during the process how will be like hey here's here's sketches for these things and that's, and that's the, the point time. where somebody says hey yeah. could we have fewer bell bottoms or <laughs> why does that person not look like a person but a a bobblehead or a mannequin of some sort <laughs> right we like yeah walking it through the playground i think is what we like to call that <laughs> moments where like is captain america's chest like this is just <laughs> right. I think the real talent a lot of the time is that, you know, there's so many good artists out there, but finding the right stylistic fit uh, for the project is is the tricky thing. I wouldn't know how to how to do that. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's important because, you know, Hal recruited Stephanie Law to do the covers for our original Blue Rose game back in 2005. Um, and her style became so iconic to blue rose um yeah <laughs> absolutely, it's absolutely true i mean yeah. it's so gorgeous it is just it is just it's absolutely gorgeous. yeah i'm just because uh, it immediately tells you like this isn't like dungeon fantasy you know like this yeah. has got a whole different thing going on yeah, uh, it's yeah, really an, an eye grabber at conventions people will walk by the booth and like do a double take you know when they catch that cover and come over to find out what it is yeah yeah beautiful stuff so yeah i'm uh, i'm just sharing with the world on twitter um that uh we're looking pretty good uh i want to refresh i might oh do we want to refresh just saying. Oh, <laughs> look at oh, that! Yeah. Nice. I want some mod haircuts. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Exactly. Get some, I want we're gonna get on space suit. Oh, absolutely. Ooh. We get on. A, gotta get on a scooter. Um, you know, <laughs> kind of drive around town and just look so mod. Um, I love thanks, it. everybody. Now you're gonna get a 1960s adventure, and Alex, who's gonna write it, is very excited. Mm -hmm. It gets nice. to be retro for him because he's a child. <laughs> yeah, no, that will be funny to see kind of what he comes up with. He'll just be like, yeah, well, so I was watching, you know, like, I don't know what, something, you know, on television. And uh, uh, I, I certainly was not alive back then. Um, but the mm. three of you weren't weren't either, I don't think. Um, back maybe when? Back, back in the 1960s. Oh. Um. <laughs> yeah. 1969 dude so, oh really like okay. the end. oh yeah. yeah yeah no i'm a 70 i'm 1970. i was born in the nice year <laughs> nice year i get it yeah. <laughs> well that is incredible yeah congratulations everybody and uh, thank yeah. you to everybody who is uh um you know i am i'm uh streaming and tweeting at the same time so people right now on on twitter are saying no troy you did it uh so you're over the you're over the the, the threshold and so that's exciting and now we just have to stream for you know another 24 hours straight uh -huh. so that we can get um those the demimons in and uh that's exciting that's right that's right you have 90 minutes to give us more money all the money yeah well, yeah I'm exactly make good on my promise and refill my water glass like oh, that yes. year I've been you know what why don't we do this i'm going to um why don't we take a quick break uh we can kind of uh tend to business and then uh, we'll jump back here in about five minutes okay okay all, all right, right everybody we'll be right Thanks, back everybody <laughs> <sighs> Oh my goodness. You're still, we're still alive. <laughs> I just didn't want to be sure that you knew that. Um, so we weren't like, all right. And I'm gonna mute you.
All right, looks like we are all back. Um, apologies for the delay. I was trying to remember how to spell Demimon's Gazetteer. Gazetteer? I don't know. I'm just saying, we don't uh, pick things that we can actually, like, um, uh, fit in a tweet. <laughs> I'm digging the background music, though. You like that? Yeah, I think it's the the uh, jazzy flutes that really get me. Um, let me go ahead and take down our modesty shield. <laughs> Here we go. Um, look at that. Looking, looking very good. Um, so, can you describe to me um, what exactly Demimon's gazetteer? Am I saying it right? Is it a 
It's a gazetteer. It's a gazetteer. It's a gazetteer. Gazetteer. <laughs> okay. Um, well, that thing, um, what um, that word is, uh, is like a fancy word for a newspaper kind of thing? Or, a, you know, or is it a... a uh, it's really... Uh, it's really sort of a reference to like middle era Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, yeah, it, it's got a history. There's a history with the name. Uh, yeah, I see. Um, the, basically, it uh, they are some that those were the names of some supplements from the past um, that I quite liked, and I think Chris quite liked. Um, but Chris, uh, I think, kept his, and I didn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, which supplements? The gazetteers. gazetteers. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, uh, I do have mine. Mm. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's a whole different thing. But um, <laughs> that was kind of the closest format I could think of um, for what I wanted. So originally, uh, the Demimond's setting was going to be a bigger uh, chunk of text in the core book, but as development kind of slid along. Um, I decided that I wanted to focus on the weird century a little more um, for a bunch of reasons. And like one of them, for example, is that, you know, uh, I recently did a big multiverse game setting, right? And I didn't want to just follow it up with something that would look similar. Um, but the other was that the authors uh, did um, the work they submitted was in a uh, was in an unusual style that I liked, but didn't quite sync up with everything else. They were very much drilled down into, you know, uh, individual people and places and things like that to to a level that didn't, you know, that, that w it was great, but it wasn't the same as the rest. And having that consistent tone is important. Um, but I really want to bring it back. Uh, so the what the what it actually is um, is in Cthulhu Awakens we have something called the corridor, and the corridor is this thing that connects different times in entirely different timelines, and uh, the basic set of ones that we have are uh, a city in India, um, a city in uh, in the at the turn of the 19th 20th century. Um, a city in Italy in the 30s, um, Arkham in the 1920s, uh, and and I may be getting this slightly wrong since I haven't looked at the text for a while and I have kind of have goldfish brain sometimes, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, 2024 New Amsterdam, which is a city that in that timeline um, exists instead of New York uh, because there is a sort of different post-colonial arrangement that creates the United States uh, than we're used to. And uh, so the idea is that when you go through the corridor, um, you inhabit the body of another person. Um, and so your lives are consistent and sync up when you're in the corridor. Um, and once you sort of stick to one, the time kind of moves with you. And the whole point of that was first was that I wanted people to be able to explore the mythos in different eras. Um, and I wanted it to be, uh, I wanted the, this to also create options where you can just make more stuff up because you can create your own mini setting that is as close to or as far away from the core awakened setting as you like. Um, however, the way to do that is to have an idea of what those uh, basic ones are in a little bit of detail, the ones that we include those those four options so uh what i would like to do with the with the gazetteer uh is to bring back that material um have it expanded a little bit um and reintroduce it as as a strong element of the game so i like that and uh, we might do it anyway, but let's pretend that we're not going to do it, and it absolutely relies on your continued pledges. That's right, and so do our lives. No. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, kind of. I mean, yeah, like food. This is what and, we do to feed ourselves and, and to live. overheads. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So, yeah, don't murder us. Please. 
pledge please today. Let yes, please, please let us leave. Don't my heart bug. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, very cool. That's exciting. Now, I wonder if we want to talk a little bit about um, uh, who do we got here? Really? Is this a, is this a joke? Um, <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, a very special guest. You will not have expected to see this face, um, and neither will have I, but I would like to welcome our very own Templar to the screen. Hey, buddy. Hey. Thanks for joining like, us. It's not Harry Houdini, is it? <laughs> and, uh, of a sort, it is. But you know, folks when who you are said not expected. I, I was saw like, your face. Uh, so this is Angel Dylan, attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> that's right. That's right, uh, Dylan. You know, and and an apt description. Except, I mean, you know, you are you're behind the curtain doing so many things. You are uh, working on fulfillment and you know figuring out how much stock we've got. You are arranging, you know, uh, so solutions to about a million problem, you know, uh, uh, problem customers and just problems that they're having. Um, in addition, you are, uh, you know, up to your eyeballs in understanding with great depth, all the things that we're doing, you know, project wise, but then also content wise and, uh, and a big fan. Um, you know, we've got, a, we've got a, a crew of people that just really get what you do and appreciate it. And so to get you on stream is a, a real delight and a, a true pleasure. So um, how do you feel? I haven't in so long. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm, I, I am completely panicking and screaming inside, but I am also fueled by beer at $90,000. So. Hey, there we Yay! go. Nice. That's Cheers, nice. my brother. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, for folks who don't know as well, like you know, the daily upkeep of the Kickstarter is a big deal. Um, you've got people yeah. who are, um, you know, uh, they, they've been hurt before by Kickstarter and they've got some feelings to share. But, you know, oh, you're on. <laughs> right. And you're you're in there um, fighting those fires and you are um, taking care of people, making sure that any misconceptions are, you know, reconcepted. And, uh, you know, and, and they come from, you know, every angle, too. Right. I mean, it's not just the the direct Kickstarter, the channel that they're supposed to be sharing in. They, they come from all over the place. Right. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, so um, I, you know, I, I watch you work every day. I really appreciate it. And uh, you know, when it when it comes to a Kickstarter stuff, like you know your business. Um, you know, is it uh, looking at you know some people don't really get sort of the finer points of what's going on. Um, but you know, it, it's a lot of work, right? It is. Yes. Uh, sorry, I just He's realized right how... now. I can tell by the look on his face. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, I've seen that face before. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, turn off the blur because it's uh, making me hard to see. I don't know if that's. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's like it's like you're coming in from a romance movie with a gauzy. Oh yeah, or like an old Polaroid. Like yeah. you know, yeah. here's a here's a picture of my dad from the seventies. You know, uh, yeah, it like, does kind of have that uh, age defect. You know, like you're in a Demi Mons <laughs> gazetteer, perhaps. Like you're semi embodied. Yeah, that's it. That's you're not right. Totally it's just like a Troy. light in here. Hang on a second. <laughs> right. Oh, and then it can't. Uh, yeah. It's it's, fine. Is that better? No. I no. That, uh, that's, not that's actually quite a bit worse. It kind of looks like you're daylight. pouring like a hot liquid over. The okay. Then it, I think it might be your camera because when you step up, it sort of tries to. Yeah, it focuses really great on your wall. Oh, and one it just. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, it was the it was reflection of the daylight. I guess the uh, the setting sun is. Right over there, the and so hitting the camera. Why do you have your curtains open? Oh, I know <laughs> this is a real banner day. Like, <laughs> no, not a typical, typical thing. It's true. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, you are uh, you're moving all those levers and and working those dials and getting all that stuff going. Um, in addition Struggling to while tap dancing on fire. That's right. That's <laughs> absolutely right. And then, you know, and keeping everybody um, relatively, you know, flameless, like uh, you're, you, you are uh, an aspect of the meat shield that goes into effect when these things are happening. And, um, I, you know, I feel, you know, we've had Kickstarters in the past that have had people that, you know, were just a little cranky. Um, this this group For like, was, you know, five years. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, man, um, we closed that out with people being like, I don't know how you kept your temper with us. And I'm yeah. thinking... Yep. <laughs> you know, and, I and no joke. Crazy kids. 
<laughs> you no know, joke. Like that was one of the first opportunities that I had to kind of get in uh, involved with Green Ronin stuff. And and uh, I will say this that uh, um, it's done. Like it's happened, right? I mean, yep. like yep. yeah, yeah. And uh, and so that's that's fantastic. And you know, never let it be. Uh, misunderstood, like, you know, we get it done. Um, and uh, sometimes it just needs some more gestation time, uh, more time in the oven. The, the yeah. it we're talking about is Sentinels of Earth Prime, a Mutants <laughs> Masterminds card game that uh, we have uh, gotten to backers. And yeah. it's going to be in stores. Um, I and, got my you know, when, <laughs> when I got mine. Yeah, I got mine in the mail. So, so like great. when quarantine started and COVID was raging, I was like, I, if I, I'm not going to die until this game gets to goddamn backers. Like, <laughs> do, this is going to happen. So. so you just kind of trade your soul for each of the Kickstarters. You're like, until yeah. we get, until we get, yeah. So um, when we are late on a thing, we're just trying to keep Chris on this earth. Okay. So just relax. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, but yeah, Dylan, you know, in watching all the work that you do, it's, it's been, um, you know, I think, you know, on this one particularly has been a lot of fun. Like, you know, there's a lot of, you know, people are excited about stuff. And right. I, I love that when I said it, you're like, oh, yeah, fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, are you, a, are you a fan of the mythos and the whole Cthulhu thing? I'm one of those people called? I have literally purchased every every single thing that Fantasy Flight Games has released in their Arkham line. Every every game, every expansion, every add-on, every every convention exclusive, Literature. everything. And they're all sleeved. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh yeah, and I've and I've got uh, a dozen different uh, role-playing games based on Cthulhu properties. I, uh, I, I am, I am a big fan. Yeah. I just had an idea for a game. We can call it Cthulhu, and then <laughs> I have that. It is a role-playing game. Oh, game. dang it! <laughs> My wife is, has run it for us. They have their own dice. It's great. <laughs> That's awesome. So do you just kind of run around knocking things off of counters and yeah. just nonchalantly? <laughs> you you yeah. play a cat trying to save the foolish humans from themselves because you are all that stands between reality and the, and the mythos. See, I like that a lot. I like Which it a great. Sounds like a Beverly game. <laughs> <laughs> it is she yes <laughs> it is. Uh, that's great yeah yeah and so um uh what about this particular project uh do have you enjoyed the most you know as far as like in engaging or even just the content or you know uh the live streams maybe might be on your list no <laughs> <laughs> uh i actually have been watching the uh, uh game that ian was running i tuned in for the live play of the session zero which was pretty great uh that just it, it was very exciting it looked really fun and then i i've had to go back and watch the other ones not live but they've also yeah th that was really fun to do and ian's such a great gm and just a great guy just to hang out with and the whole cast is like we're, we're legitimately talking about doing more stuff um yeah. and uh yeah so we'll i gotta say i'm really heartened to hear all of these people who are doing like example games and and live plays for you know limited time where everybody who is playing is having such a good time that they want to keep going with it that's right I mean, yeah that tells us that we have a game that is engaging and fun and people are that's going right. to enjoy and want to play and that mm, yeah. that's that's what we're trying to do so well, that's yay. the thing we'll, absolutely we'll the target but yeah, yeah, as a general excitement, though, uh, Cthulhu Awakens does a number of things that I think are very interesting that all of my other Cthulhu games generally don't, uh, which was kind of the de design philosophy uh, that Malcolm baked into it. I I've been kind of fly on the wall watching as some of those ideas uh, came out and rolled around and percolated a bit, uh, but also just uh, using it as a toolkit for everything else, uh, especially the Expanse, which yeah. I badly want to put together an Expanse game that, I mean, not not to spoil anything, but if anybody's gotten to the end of the books, it so obviously ties in. <laughs> it would be so it has, easy yeah. to work with the Expanse. Yeah, all the Expanse fans are talking about it and, you know, they, they the 100% they get it. Yeah, yep. yeah, yep, absolutely. I also love how we can see the the ways to apply this as uh, as a, a new twist on both something like Blue Rose and then something as as different from Blue Rose as the Expanse, right. and yeah. that people who know the systems are like, oh, I can use 
I can use this. Yeah. Right. Because yeah, again, yeah. like that's what we want. We want it to be like really rich and integrated and useful across all sorts of stuff, not just this project, but all of our age projects. Absolutely. Yeah. I yeah. say casually. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's like, like, yeah. That series of blog articles that Malcolm wrote uh, for the Ronin Roundtable blog that talked about different crossovers and how to blend together uh, various games that we do and make yeah. completely new genres and new settings out of them was very inspirational. And I have robbed a lot of those ideas and pilfered them for my own over and over again. <laughs> You're not alone. Many people bring that up. They bring it up when we're, you know, doing streams on Thursday. Um, you know, they it is really just apparent that 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 age is that sort of puzzle piece, that sort of modular experience that you can just sort of blend together and get a genre that you, you know, that's new. I mean, that's fun. I really. Well, I had a question. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm butting in, but no, you didn't. It was what, great. It literally, was, uh, what we do? Before, yeah, go for it. Before the break, um, I was thinking, why, why did um, you end up choosing to do? Well, I know why. Why you did pulpy. Um, uh, pretty pulpy, pretty. right? Mm -hmm. uh, but how would you do a cinematic Cthulhu game? Do you think about that? Oh, yeah. yeah. If you wanted to apply cinematic things, to it? Like, one of the things about Cthulhu Awakens is that uh, it doesn't necessarily play the same as other games. You can customize it. Um, certainly, by default, um, you're not that tough in Cthulhu Awakens, right? Characters have levels, but uh, they don't get like super duper powerful as they ascend in level. Le a level is really just a package to make sure you're not the kind of person who goes like, well, I spend all my advances on one skill. I am, mm -hmm. you know, the I'm blade. Using a sword, but I <laughs> and I don't know how to wear shoes, which you see right. sometimes in very <laughs> generic games. Um, I do have, but three, we have an three, option nine, where you can use fortune uh, adapted from the expanse, and you know that makes you a cinematic tough person. And the thing is, is that there are plenty of mythos. Uh, there's plenty of mythos fiction that goes in that direction, um, including right from the beginning. I mean, Cthulhu gets rammed with a ship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the classic one to mention, of course. Well, that's a rude way to wake up. <laughs> um, you know, plus, you have like you know folks like Brian Lumley um, who do you know the like weird high fantasy horror thing um, using the mythos, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think he has like a main character who like is a magic android who travels around in a clock. Uh, three times. As one does. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just sort of like a mythos Doctor Who, right? So I mean, if, that, if it can accept that, it'll accept other stuff. Plus, you know, the monsters are tough in this game. Uh, <laughs> they're real tough. And, but we have the option where, you know, if you want to, uh, if you want a cinematic game, we also have an option to give fortune to monsters, so the monsters get tougher too, right? So it all balances out. That's not fair. But this yeah. is kind of, but it's not the kind of game like we don't follow this boilerplate where like the whole point of of, of playing this game is to like you know uh, trundle around in the dark, uh, trip over something terrifying, lose your mind, and die in a mm -hmm. green environment. Um, it's uh, not the blue green environments are bad, but they're just not the only thing. Uh, that is true. Yeah, the, we can. We can. Uh, it's so funny as you're saying this. I'm making a graphic. Of the blue green. <laughs> it's a blue green environment. Yeah, and yeah. so you know, um, someone once asked me, like, "Oh, does this mean that somebody can, you know, use the skirmish stunt to push back a shog off uh, twenty feet?" And I said, "Yes." And it wouldn't be 20 feet if you spent that many stud points. It would be this many yards. <laughs> so, yeah. so take that, pet ant. Like, yeah. Like, sure. Like, why not? If you're having, if you're having fun, and we're willing, you know, I'm willing to support it. Uh, sorry, Tibby. <laughs> Tibby's like, I don't know. Yeah, I hear your voice complaining here. in the background. Warning you of the mythos <laughs> right now. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you this is a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Tibby yeah. knows Shagoths. Yeah. You can probably see those like weird color out of space interdimensional 
creature. Mm. Yeah. Through me and stuff. Creepy. All right. So you know, let's talk about the swimming through people. That's the other one. Is that from beyond? The Sorry, one where, where... God, I'm getting my stories. So that's, that's where there's a machine that shows you the weird life forms that are in a, that are kind of overlapping with our. Oh race. yeah. 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 Hmm. Yeah. Well, so speaking of all these, you know, creepy creatures and, um, you know, and looking at some of our art, uh, we've got, um, so we've got the, what are they called? The, they're not the, they're not the Yithians. They're the Yithians. Yithians? Yithians. We have Yith, Yith, T-H. Okay. Yeah. The the Yithians. Let's do a rundown for folks on. Oh, so we've got an, a piece of art, and I'll show it real fast. That that has a a darling um, uh, little girl uh, hanging out with her friend um, Tentacles, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then that's Mom oh, yeah, Thulu in the background. I'm presuming. Um, Tentacles uh, of Athens, very important figure. Very, very, yeah, very well known <laughs> in this timeline. Yeah, yeah. But so let, let's talk a bit about the, you know, who we got. Um, okay, well, that is a picture of a god spawn, which is uh, being uh, created with human genetic material and whatever a indescribable alien god brings to them. What other, um, yeah, any extra appendages <laughs> or things that might be attributed to an alien god? And, you know, there is the presentable one, the lesser okay. one, and the major one, which is Oh, so less, we're talking, you know. Less, I see. Uh, so it's not just. welcome at the holiday dinner table. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Um, and, and not so it's not always just sort of this, this towering um a uh, tentacled tiny armed person or being yeah. it's it's no, uh, two separate versions of the same creature there we go and then in the background there um the i've been lovingly calling him mom thulu um <laughs> is that another one oh, of I, them i can't speak for what's in the background there that's true yeah yeah no, that's no, not canon it's it's not canon uh -huh. it's, in the it's mysterious it is quite mysterious um i have uh, not seen raised by wolves duke um anybody duke else? Oh, no oh yeah of course you have and yeah that is certainly something <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's certainly something thank something you Duke. You know, <laughs> it's it's one of those things where like every it's one of those things where it's like you know golden age so golden age of television-y saying mm. anything about any episode spoils it oh. ah <laughs> I gotcha so yeah we and we don't like to spoil things um uh you know we on thursday owen won't give away the the ending of a movie that happened in the 80s like that's how committed we are uh to the <laughs> to the practice but uh yeah just real quick um uh if folks are tuning in and saying what is this well you know this is the um you know it's the end of the uh, Cthulhu Awakens Kickstarter. We have crossed the 90k threshold. Well into um, you know we're, we're uh, going to be streaming until we get uh, to 100k, and so that may be the next five days. <laughs> we are going to do this on stuff. <laughs> um, no, we're not. We're under ready. an hour. <laughs> We've got under an hour. Under an hour. Midday. That's yeah. I think we can do it. I feel like um, I feel like awesome. we've got some. We've got some Is this benefactors. More Jerry Lewis telethon or NPR mm. fundraiser? Like which? Oh uh, god! <laughs> Jerry Lewis is such an odious character. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like him. Um, you know, but I mean, I'm sticking with the horror theme here. Come on, that's true. Drive. <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah we'll be cthulhu lewis and uh um, <laughs> yeah yeah and so we just need to get we need to raise just a little bit more money so that that god can get another tiny arm because <laughs> it only has one right now right like that uh, is a creepy piece of art the first time i saw that i thought is that a rat kid oh no no it's worse <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool 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 so one of the one of the things that is distinctive about the game is that you know we did allow ourselves to be inventive um, yeah. when when working on the creatures so some of the ones that are familiar to you from the mythos will have abilities that are maybe a little different than you expect um and uh you know and there are a couple of things that are brand new we made them up yeah, yeah that's what we do for a business right? <laughs> <laughs> right? 
because that's part of the spirit of the game is that you know we talk a lot about the source material and things like that because you know we we wanted to have that strong foundation and work from there and deliberately build a game setting but the act of deliberately creating a game setting and owning an annoying cat (laughs) 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 is uh save you humans is that you know you can take ownership you can take ownership of the material and just as uh people working in fiction and film have done this that's what we've done oh yeah and i just want to say that there's certainly nothing wrong with another approach um you know if you want to do a type of literary homage right which i think you know call of cthulhu which is one of the greatest role-playing games ever made um certainly went with a particular vision of of literary homage there and i'm not mm-hmm. going a particular vision like that but <laughs> no not at all yeah this just was like kind of respect the word and reverence yeah right? because that kind of like you know that kind of purism has to do with very specific members of the lovecraft circle um and not others right uh and call of Duty is very successful doing it that way and certainly we don't want to do the same thing right um because what would be the point for anyone uh <laughs> so yeah so we're a little more wide open right like that kind of homage and linking it to one genre or period or something or a narrow field i think are the two basic ways people tend to do games in the mythos so um you know i certainly want people to feel cool doing those things right yeah. and want to offer something else um you know uh, someone's uh, touching their microphone uh while we're uh you, just, you can hear it coming over the stream uh, but i also wanted to say uh in adjusting just, my eyeglasses because uh, i'm it's sorry the, yeah sorry no worries no you're fine you're fine um but i i you know there is this and i just want i mean you know we've, we've got the 90k so um you know but i don't want to make anybody angry but i also want to say this is a genre like it's a it's a it's deep and rich and you can find oh, yeah. something as cute as a chibi little cthulhu that you put on your you know a, a stuffed toy for your kid or you know uh, high-end rich kind of like uh tomes that you can pick up that you know uh special collections and you know how many thousands of movies uh, am i allowed are- to like tell a story yes please do i love it back in the old days when i first started um but it is kind of one of those stories i was when i first moved to seattle um uh, I was uh, uh, hanging out with all of the um, role-playing people that had moved here. Um, it was like everybody I ever knew in the role-playing industry had come to Seattle in the late 90s and early 2000s. And, you know, um, going back to my earliest career. And uh, and so some of the people you may remember, uh, Pagan Publishing, um was uh, started with uh, John Tynes in college doing like a Call of Cthulhu fanzine and it blossomed into this thing that eventually became Delta Green. Oh, wow. And I was I was hanging out in the city uh, with all my role play friends when that thing was coming together and I um, I got to see and um, and how it how it forked the mythology, right? Uh, up to that point, things were pretty like, um, uh, you know, we're 1920s investigators in Call of Cthulhu just like this. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you've got Delta Green, modern day, you know, Scott Glancy with his uh, turret of different weapons to pull off his back to, you know, (laughs) take out modern cultists and all of that stuff. And and it was exciting. It was exciting to be around and be like, this is a you know this is a definite fork this is a new uh mm-hmm. way to approach all this material and it's kind of fun to, to do that right so um I and really... it was taking in contemporary um you know happenings in fiction where you know, they took that yes. x-files element yeah. and, yes. and added that to the mythos mm-hmm. very successfully um but yeah like as as um we we're saying um you know the the mythos as as other people have played in the mythos since Lovecraft was alive, like his friends played around with the mythos, you know, Robert E. Howard wrote some mythos stories, a bunch of other people. Um, and it's just been 
a continuous thing for the last hundred years. Um, and so, I mean, essentially, Cthulhu Awakens is us, you know, kind of planting the green Renin flag and being like, well, this is our take. And it has some things you recognize, but a lot of things you won't recognize. And sure. so, you know, you, you may have a lot of previous knowledge, but if you play our game, you can't rely on that because things might be subtly or not subtly different in um, the way that we handle them in the game. So. Absolutely. You know, it's always been, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, please. No, you, no, please. I was gonna say, that's always been one of my favorite things about all of the different uh, mythos games and uh, uh, novels and comics and mov movies and things that I, I've been into since I was a teenager and I uh, read the, the horror Red Hook for the first time. Uh, it is is everybody has a slightly different, slightly tweaked emphasis or or take or uh, focus on how they want to do things. Whether it's make it more you know two fisted gumshoe detective story noir, or is this actually just existential dread thrown right. in your face nonstop? Or you know well, that's my daily life. So I don't yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But. Uh, Every every single company that that does it a little bit different is is just uh, amazing, and it's one of those things that like that's uh, honestly part of my fandom for it is trying to uh, pick out and find where they're similar and where they're wildly different and why they decided to go that way. And I, I love I'm, I'm that. I'm sort of the nerd that uh, analyzes and dissects different versions of Ninja Turtles and Masters of the Universe. So <laughs> you know. <laughs> Hey, oh, you're not, you're not alone. Yeah. People are definitely into that. And I want to also, but also yeah, love ahead, yeah. all of them dearly. <laughs> right, right. You know, and, and I, I want to also share that, oh. like, uh, can you hear me? <laughs> poor, poor Malcolm is like, I, I want to say something to Dylan though. We had, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. we had a chat about this. Like we had a chat, of, we had a chat about the, the Kevin Smith master of the universe being a cosmic horror thing. Oh yeah. And oh my God. Real, I was right? not braced for that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that that's, maybe, the whole thing where, like, you know, I, I I'm gonna spoil it. Okay, so you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna <laughs> spoiler warning, spoiler alert. Basically, one of the, you know, one of the things that happens is that Skeletor gets the power to look at the entire universe all at once. Um, That's true. There is a toy of Skeletor to Evil Lynn, and they both go insane. Yeah. Right, ah, and okay. Eva Lynn is like walking around talking about how life is meaningless and beast man. <laughs> yeah. I don't think people were meant to look at things that way. <laughs> that episode was hard because, like, Eva Lynn's reaction to actually being able to see the total expanse of the universe and how utterly insignificant they are with all of their power and ability was shocking to her. And 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 I and the the actress, I think it's Lena Headley, isn't it? Uh, who played yeah. Cersei Lannister? Yeah, yeah uh, her her voice performance in that show and her reaction was just so great. You you felt how shocking that was. Yeah. It was an amazing episode. So that I thought is, this was Malcolm talking about how he would do it. Me too. That's <laughs> a, I didn't realize that this is a real thing. Yeah. Now we, what actually we're just having a fan <laughs> moment. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it Duke's right happened. on board. Duke's been yeah. with us the whole way. Um, He's in. Yeah, there's a weird, like, all their stuff that happens. Like, you know, they killed everybody in heaven. Yeah. There's a line yeah. that is spoken, right? Duh. Like, like, really? I mean, what the heck? That is, yeah, I mean, natural did it. And I'm not even, I'm not even <laughs> right. this, this intellectual property franchise. I never had the toys when I was growing up. I never watched the cartoon for more than five minutes. Yeah, it was the speed bump before I watched, before I watched Star Blazers, man. Oh yeah, for you, that's so funny. That's yeah. I'm just saying. For me, it was a gateway to gay. Um, <laughs> loved it, loved it, absolutely loved it. Um, but yeah, absolutely, really enjoyed it. But um, but one of the things too, I just want to get back to um, the thing that we're talking about, um, the overarching theme, which is the Cthulhu mythos in general and there's just this often this sort of reaction of like uh, you can put that in my mythos you know <laughs> and uh and what there i love about mythos. that's right and what i love too about what you said dylan is that you know th there is a problematic person this idea came out of and and i feel like the redemption of this idea is the diversity for which we then get to you know slice it up as a punishment uh, so that he's spinning you know uh eternally in his grave um and, and i really like that and i also think like for a true fan of this genre um to 
look at the world as though what has you know what have they borrowed or how are they influenced by the, the the main tenets and some of these main themes that's incredible that's a really interesting way to think about things and so if you don't do that then you're not a real fan and so of course yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I to remember that in role playing games you decide what happens at your table if you're the game master yeah. you know? absolutely absolutely so if there's stuff from other fiction other rpg supplements whatever you can put it in if you want to, oh, yeah. you know, like it's your campaign. And, um, and just to just assuage, assuage, assuage uh, your fears, to massage your fears, I want to um, let you know that everybody knows I'm just a, a full of garbage. So when I say that <laughs> stuff, 100% teasing, everybody can, everyone's the perfect fan, um, every, every single one of you. So, but, uh, you but yeah. just bring us to say stuff. That's, that's exact. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to ruin that, you know. No, no, not ruin yeah, it at all. Like secrets here. Uh, no, nope, not a secret. Um, but yeah, so, you know, uh, um, we are at this point, um, let's see, I'm not looking so at the live 91 real close. I feel like we can do it. Um, you know, uh, all things considered 43 minutes to go. Um, that's exciting. Um, you know, this is, uh, you know, this has been, I would, I would say, I feel like this was one of the most fan engaged, um, you know, mm -hmm. Kickstarters that we've done. I mean, doesn't that feel like, do you feel like we've just been, you know, being a little more uh, sort of early inclusion kind of, you know, process? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, just, I mean yeah. there's already I, uh, a... I mean, uh, sorry, not to cut you off, Chris. I'm just saying Dylan would, uh, Dylan, Dylan handles all of our uh, Kickstarters and knows yeah. our engagement yeah. levels. So. Well, I mean, the, the nice... This this is a little bit of a personal note, but uh, role playing game kickstarters tend to have way less comments, <laughs> like in a general sense. And I I I love RPG fans for that. Uh, board game fans, you're the best. But also, wow, you guys are overwhelming sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, Tidal wave of enthusiasm there. <laughs> yeah. Right. The, uh, uh, generally speaking, though, uh, all of the the fan comments and the stuff that I, I I've seen that have come across through the Kickstarter or through messages or through our, our customer service email uh, have been incredibly supportive and and people like talking about their ideas and stuff that how they want to use it, what they want to do with it, uh, how you know what specific aspects sound really really fun to them like the uh the last couple the secret history of cthulhu update that we did mm -hmm. and the uh the two eldritch workings uh yesterday and today got a lot of there people seem to like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i i read that stuff and i was like oh <laughs> i absolutely yeah, I mean, among the big ticket things so so we did kind of save them for the end <laughs> well, they're, they're really great yeah. and very evocative. I mean, you know, yeah. that Malcolm, that is kind of a thing that you do uh, evoke, um, you know, <laughs> sort of uh, creative uh, thoughts and and sort of how people will bring this to their you know table. You offered me like as I was getting ready for the for the um, Cthulhu Awakens uh, stream, the revelations of the of the backy. Um, <laughs> we, we, um, we had a lot of. Uh, I was just kind of thinking, like, how should I do this? And you offered some really great advice, and we talked a little bit about that. That was a lot of fun. Um, but uh, the the thing that I love about this as well is that even like as I read it, because I'll read some, you know, and they're they are uh, our our updates are inspiring and they're fun and they're sometimes they're they got a little you know uh, humor to them or but you know these really sort of like I, I was like I got to really up my game on the description side of things in you know in, in limited character space for you know uh facebook and twitter and all that stuff but yeah it was really evocative for sure well first of all you know we had a bunch of really great writers on this um and they did a good job and as you know developing you know i did a bunch of writing too uh i always do but developing you know the big thing really is to go through that stuff and i think a lot of the time for the writer when they're submitting stuff everything kind of looks flat to them, right? They have a few things that they like, but it's just whatever they can get down, right? Because writing at length is hard, right? This mm. is the one thing I want to kind of say to everybody is that, you know, um, you know, these are people slinging, you know, uh, 10, 20, 30,000 words. Um, and I have to, it brings me back to when 
you know, my, my main thing was freelancing. When I started out, I was in my last year of university and I did this huge chunk of work. And then after that university was easy, right? Cause like, <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, they're doing all this hard work, but it's a lot. And, yeah. you know, often you can tell that they're exhausted by the end of it and you can see the, their rhythm in their writing. So what you kind of want to do is go, you know, this idea that you had is great. And this is the thing that you should polish and make big, you know, whereas this thing over here, well, I can tell that you were writing while you were thinking of the idea that you have, right? So I can tell that this part, this is usually at the beginning or after section breaks. Uh, there's a lot of I'm thinking and I'm typing until I have my idea, right? Um, so there's usually a bit of floored prose leading up to the actual like chunk of stuff that you want. Yeah. So you yeah. Kind of provide guidance to tell them to go like, you know, maybe trim that down a bit and make this cool thing bigger. Right. <laughs> but sometimes people have this great idea like um, like David, uh, David Castro, who worked on the first chapter. He he's the one who came up um, with the with the agency, with the descendants of um, Carter and West. Carter and West. Yeah. Came with basically with the foundation of the Carter West agency. And so, you know, that's so cool. Um, it was sort of presented as an aside and I was immediately like, this is the kind of thing that, you know, PCs can get involved with and they can join. Um, maybe if they're early, they can be involved in the evolution of this organization, right? Things like that. Right. So not my idea, but it is an idea that I tag as this cool thing. Yeah, it's right. a cool thing. The, the uh, it is, West, yeah. That is really good. It's really good. Thanks, David. <laughs> so, uh, so really, like you have to, you have to give credit for the the great work that was that was done. The same with uh, with the Demi. <laughs> and just in case you wanted a supernatural tie-in, make it Carter West instead. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Not my uh, fandom, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, that's such a good response. I'm gonna start saying that for I just did sorry, that, that's not my fandom, but yeah, yeah that's that's great. That's so good. I love, mm. Solid. You were gonna say something, Malcolm. Sorry. sorry. Oh, I forgot. I think part of the reason I have no sense of humor is that I don't get a lot of Spanish references, right? Like I uh I didn't have television when Buffy was on. Mm -hmm. so. None of yeah. that. All the Star Trek references. So, I mean, you just, you, you focused your fandom. That's yeah. right. Well, and the other thing, too, is when uh, you're, I mean, in, Malcolm, when you're immersed in in helping create the fandom, um, you know, that's that's a focus. You know, that's, you, you, you're you spending a lot of time and brain, you know, electricity to put all that stuff together. And it can be uh, challenging to go, okay, I'm going to step out and try to get what this other stuff is, this show that's been on for three years now. I'm going to try to, like, you know, read this voluminous volumes of, uh, of this particular story it's it's difficult but, well i yeah. was a latecomer to mythos stuff too um mm. like even back you know back at the beginning of my um back at the beginning of my career like 20 years ago i didn't give it much account i'd read some stuff but you know um that was something that literally everybody around me was interested in right so i started yeah. to and i was cautious because i'd heard things about lovecraft right um, so, but then it ended up being really rewarding and I'm kind of glad that I had to struggle with it to get to it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Because I think I avoided maybe some bad mental habits. Um, and also it made me feel like I was free to, to kind of screw around with it. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So it didn't become too dogmatic for you. You were able to just yeah. sort of take it in a new like, way mind you like there are people who can you know not have to go through that journey and still do like fantastic things like one game that is not ours that i'll plug is the yellow king rpg by pelgrane that is fantastic like um you oh, have friends at pelgrane. to give us mm -hmm. a bunch of money and then go buy the yellow king because it is it's certainly worth it um i got it at uh OrcaCon. I oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and i i just could not get my eyes off it so and that helps you to do me actually having this nice community of people who have you know 
come up with these great ideas. It propels you to do more. Um, right. And that's true for uh, uh, cosmic horror stuff. And that is true uh, being surrounded by uh, other developers um, and working with freelancers and working with people and having the final work be the summation of, of that kind of community effort, both passive and active. I love that. Well, we just dropped the link uh, in chat. So if you're watching this on demand and hanging on our every word, as I know you are, um, check the live chat for a link to the uh, Pelgrim uh, Press, uh, the Yellow King. And that's their, the complete bundle. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how, um, how different uh, cultural forces like come in and out of gaming. Um, you know, things that were very influential become less influential over time or more influential over time. Or, you know, like when I was a, a young nerd in the late seventies, early eighties, like part of being a nerd in that time was like, you watched Monty Python, you could quote it endlessly. That's oh, right. You know, yeah. That's, that's what true. you would find in nerd circles, you Absolutely. know, like, Oh, like, you know, do you like Tolkien and Michael Moorcock? And do you like Dr. Who? And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, uh, it just was part of the whole thing. But uh, now, like, if, you know, a, a young person comes into role playing in 2022, like, Monty Python is not part of that. That's, that's 50 years old, you know. Um, so it's different fandoms instead mm -hmm. that are making an impact. Yeah, they got at least three Dragon Balls. Under that's right. <laughs> they do, and it just a, a just a shit ton of Pokathulus or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, there are Pokathulus actually too. I know you think you made that up, but you I did yeah. not. It's actually <laughs> also a, a username that a dear friend of ours, uh, David Reed, the doctor I call him, uh, uses uh, online. So get very mad at me uh, for. Uh, making that reference, which is what I live for. Um, but the other thing is like a lot of culture jamming goes on, a lot of gender bending, a lot of people just really mm -hmm. making these worlds their own. And I love it. I mean, like that is, you know, and that's one of the, it's, it's kind of at the core of what the whole adventure game engine's about. Right. I mean, that is, that I'm sorry, is I'm applauding myself. I just tweeted to see if we could get to 91,000 before a nice, a nice 90, even 91,000. And I just saw it flip over to 9137. That's awesome. And I wonder why, <laughs> why is it not, <laughs> why is it not updating on oh. our end? There we go. Okay. There we go. Uh, did you, did everyone see that? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, I, I think that's, you might that's be. because of me. That's you, totally my influence. Of course it is. <laughs> absolutely. Um, um, but I was going to say, you must be a, a little, like, I'm just a little off the time stream, I think. <laughs> I don't know yeah. why the, yeah, yeah. the delay is happening, but uh, let's see. Um, it's passed on. The parrot is no more. Um, oh, he sees the I'm expert. <laughs> when I was in high school, we actually had I to make a story. rule at our table that, that it, this was a no Python zone. You are not allowed <laughs> to see yeah. a, a freaking there Python There was a point where it got to be, like, a little too much. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not was, my, it's not, not my fandom. Right. Not my fandom. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm very glad those days are over. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are humorless. So it's, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. It was tough. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. No, I, I imagine Malcolm leaving post-it notes around, around the apartment. I didn't understand your Python quote. F you. <laughs> you stand for Felix. No, I, <laughs> I participated in that as much as as much as as anyone, right? I gotta well, tell you, Duke, I am unsurprised, my friend. <laughs> un, I, yeah. Um, sorry, Malcolm. I just wanted to make sure uh, we gave Duke the business. I mean, we're talking about young people. I showed I showed Kate when she was a young person. Not that she's old now, but she's a full adult and can tell me to she doesn't want to watch any more of my old shows but mm -hmm. she was under my control at the time so yeah. i had her watch uh some Monty python and she was just like this is terrible i don't get it why, uh, why is everyone yelling <laughs> <laughs> right yeah yeah and why is got, everyone I mean, around you repeating everything? Got She's like, that's the worst ending of a movie ever, and I never want to watch any more of this. How dare you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the yeah, kids today, they found their own. <laughs> it's uh, good. It's was, uh, 
when Kate was 16, I decided to run a, a second edition AD&D campaign set in Greyhawk uh, for her and Nicole, and it broadened out to our regular game group because I I wanted her to just, you know, have a little, have an experience of what D&D was like, you know, in the old days. <laughs> and um, so she was looking through the monster manual and first of all, for her, it was like a book of potential pets, uh, not like things. <laughs> um, but then she also said to me, like, do you have another version of this with like better art? <laughs> <laughs> and I said I do actually. <laughs> you know, Grandpa, this kind of sucks. Yeah. That's hilarious. You know, we had to roll our Thacko uphill both ways. <laughs> actually, one of the better campaigns that we've had in the last decade. So, yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, you know, and I will say even just the progression of our art just generally like it's gotten really good i mean like that you know art well, 20 years 22 years of right. experience and working with different people and mm -hmm. you know I, i've got to say back in the old days there weren't these people who thought that they who who had like the not who thought who who had the um the platform to to show art where you could just kind of stumble across them and be right like, Right. Goodness, let's hire this person. They're amazing. They draw winged rabbits the best of anybody. <laughs> That's right. Who'd have thunk it? Right, yeah. Um, you know, we, we had to, like, go hire people out of college and stuff or do it yeah. yourself or, or like i mean you know and that's that definitely you look back on some of that art which i, I i'm very fond of it I, I it's almost a, a genre style of its own but it's like you uh you end up um it, some of it looks like doodles you know what i mean like someone's just sort of trying to figure out how this there's a whole bunch of stylistic looks like. stuff there's yeah. you know people at the, in those it days was... were painting paintings and drawing drawings mm -hmm. and not now templar you're a you're a painter of things right um go ahead Sorry. Me? Yeah. Uh, I was just going to say, in those days, to get picked up as a freelance artist, because I, I worked as a freelance artist for about 10 years at Wizards of the Coast on uh, the miniatures games, uh, it was basically, you're either, you have a booth at a convention, or you know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. And that's, gotcha. that's more or less it. Uh, yeah, I got my start with uh, uh, WizKids before Tops, when they were still based in Bellevue in Seattle. Uh, or Bellevue outside of Seattle um, because I was, I was dating somebody who was on the game design team and, and they were like, Hey, the, the lead miniatures guy, he, he really needs some help. Uh, you paint miniatures. Look at all your Warhammer stuff. You want to, you want to put together a portfolio? Well, and, and I'll introduce you. And, and then that turned into uh, 10 years of Wizards of the Coast doing all of the pre-painted D and D and Star Wars and Dreamblade and, that's awesome. Yeah, it, 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 here's the thing to remember. I mean, you know, there are, it is going to be difficult to find someone doing this work that didn't start as a fan of this work. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, and that, and that it really does kind of start that. I mean, I, I by in, by no means am I inviting a, a mountain load of submissions and ideas and things for, for age <laughs> or whatever, but oh, you know, <laughs> we, we get those for sure. But you know, it is a reality that, you know, it, I, I think it's almost a reflection of how fandom itself has really grown and, and refined itself. Like, you know, the, they know the lingo, they know the process, they know the development, they, and that that's video games or tabletop role play games. It, it's just, that's the consumer, I think, is a lot smarter and more connected to the source than they've ever been. And, and Nicole, I guess because of what you said, like, you know, there was no internet. <laughs> yeah, I, in the I wrote a, like, a, an actual letter to TSR in like 1980 or 81, something like that. And like six months later, I got an answer um, and, uh, you know, that addressed my my question. And it was the, like the coolest thing to be like, oh, I got a letter from yeah. TSR I love know, with that. their logo on it. And yeah, yeah. yeah. official <laughs> and all that. Now, do you still have a letter? Uh, I believe it is in my mom's house somewhere. Um, yeah, but I, I'm I've lost track of where exactly, but I would love to find it, because one thing I'm extremely curious about is to see 
if the Ooh. answer was from Skip Williams, uh, who is, no. you know, the sage, um, because I then later in my life worked with Skip when I worked at Wizards of the Coast um, yep. for four years. So it would really be a hoot <laughs> if I could find that and be like, yeah. look, Skip. Hey, Skip. Yeah. <laughs> you helped like, me Skip's out. Skip's been over to our house. And then you could just yeah. be like, by the way. <laughs> when I was a child. When I, was <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to brag, but I, I, I also did one of those. And I, I had my letter reprinted in the letters column of an old Mirage Studios. Hey, 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 answered nice. by Peter Laird, who kind of ripped me apart a little bit. But I was yeah. so pleased that he even read it that I, you know, it was <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you have your letter still? Uh, no. Oh, no. No, no. But I do have that comic and the second printing and the third printing. Of course the the closest I get to that is when the owners, Louisiana Pacific, of the Portland Timbers professional soccer team during the National uh, North American Soccer League uh, days in the 80s um, responded to my complaint letter, which I wrote as a 11-year-old, to tell them <laughs> that I objected to them selling the Portland Timbers and my family spent money on those tickets and that was a lot of money and I knew that uh, that this meant that it was important and how dare they and they sent me an autographed soccer ball and said yeah yeah kid go away but, um, <laughs> but of course in my, in my case like you guys all got like here's a question i'm a fan whatever mm -hmm. i was like fuck you for this <laughs> year old you know like our person to anyone who knows nicole come out. <laughs> That's right. I, i'm just saying i have no doubt that you're an 11 year old dropping f-bombs to the you know to the i was, uh, I was actually very I'm, polite back in i'm days. imagining <laughs> well i mean you still are very very polite just you know, I mean, there's there's a there's a point we cross, and then you get the f bomb. I think that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> Which I just yeah, I'm the one who always pushes our streams into the mature rating. I uh, you know you <laughs> you aren't the worst offender, and honestly, I think it's probably me. I think I'm probably the worst offender, but I try to catch myself, and then I start laughing, and then the whole thing is up. Like you know, then there's real trouble. Uh, uh, we are in the waning moment of the um, thank you stream for the Cthulhu Awakens Kickstarter, and we are. I'm going to make sure I refresh this because I don't know why this has just decided to not be you know refreshing but uh it is the opposite that's, of thing. that's what i see your total batch is fine nice and i'm like two seconds in the future so that's right that's right oh this is great well you know well, here's the problem we're only half of the beast here we need to get <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we need the other it. half of the beast to get on board we do <laughs> we do dan Aykroyd and goat leggings the Dan Aykroyd and goat leggings. <laughs> <laughs> you might be on a different site, uh, but I'd like uh, to. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Um, you know, you know what? really good vodka. Dan yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Drinking like, vodka from a crystal vodka? skull would be a good thing to do in a horror game. So. Well, the thing That's that surprised great. me is, of course, you know, I immediately went out and got some because I listen to a lot of gothy music. And like to have skulls in my life, but the vodka was actually good. <laughs> like you did, it was actually it's quite filtered good. through diamonds or something. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> diamonds and the the like. I, I think it was like the bladders of go go like goats or something, right? Like you missed the days <laughs> when the Gamma Trade Show used to be held in Las Vegas, and uh, and that meant that companies would have these fancy dinners at locations like. Um, if fancy you know hotel restaurants and uh red square was the one that mm -hmm. introduced us to the vodka flight mm -hmm. oh right yeah it's like shot glasses of different vodkas and the and the ice block that they're served in is like actually red gelatin so uh yeah uh, but but for all the people who who thought that vodka you know it tastes like nothing, when you have a vodka flight, you find out that vodkas do oh, taste yeah. like something. Oh, that's vodka right. Flight. They taste wildly different. Flight, yes. Yeah, flight. Yeah. yeah, No, it's a fight. It's a vodka Never. fight. You, you, oh, you like same, same I thing. Flight. Three me shots. I'm like you know Russian Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, yeah. But, but the presentation <laughs> was very filtered over. Yeah. What the presentation was very dramatic. Video? Was it pretty dramatic? Like I yeah, can just like imagine. You got it. A, a block of red ice 
um, <laughs> stabilized with gelatin, as Nicole says, but, you know, block of ice. And yeah. it had holes drilled in it, and the vodka shots were dropped down inside. So it in, in, in a glass. That, right? yeah. had I've it, had yeah. that experience, but it was yeah. more of an aroma experience. Like, they brought her, like, what the person – it was someone that – I was there for a wedding in Vegas, and someone, uh, you know, I was sitting down, and uh, there were probably, like, I don't know, 16 of us in the space, but they had ordered a drink for me that was really not a drink. It was more of an, like, you just open the thing and then the, the waiter wafts it at you and you're supposed to, oh, yeah. and I was just like, yeah, what was that? Like, what is paid this? money for this? Like, they paid my money for the, for me to have the experience. So, <laughs> I mean, you know, like, I hope it was worth it, but. Um, I'm just going to say we can tell that we have, uh, I at least can tell that we've been on for almost two and a half hours because. <laughs> Because <laughs> we're talking about yeah, the about conversation has devolved, but uh, um, but never it's never it, it's never a, a de evolution. It, it is really a um, that's what we do. Like we just have fun. We get on and we kind of riff and and uh, and talk about all the things. And you get to know some of the you know personalities of the people that make the things that you love. And I like doing that um, for sure. I mean, give it a, this a refresh. I just want to see if we're that. Hold on here. What are we looking at? We're inching up. We're inching up. Minutes and fourteen hundred twenty-one backers, which is great. I'm this so is super pleased. great. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, getting over a thousand people on board before you've produced your thing is is heartening. You know, yeah. like especially during pandemic when everybody's working in isolation and. And we don't get as much feedback. When you go to the conventions, you get feedback from your fans and, and other professionals telling you that they like your work and what you've been doing. And, and you see the evidence that you've made some people happy with your stuff. Yeah. And that's been a little lacking these last couple of years. So, so I mean, I am not taking for granted at all that there are over 1,400 people who uh, have have put their money in on this idea that Malcolm yeah. had and and executed. Yeah, and it's so fantastic. We're happy about it. Yeah, really. Thank you. I mean, everybody. Um, and uh, you know, there are steps among this process as we kind of move towards you know taking it to market. And um, you know, that's um, this is exciting. And what I like is our connection to these early adopters. Um, thank you so much. Yeah, Duke is great. Uh, Duke is always here, uh, as yeah. well as Jonesy. And you know, yeah. there's a lot of folks that uh, um, I, Duke was the first um, fan of ours that's to say, I love you. Um, on yeah. Isn't that sweet? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, but I mean, that's what we do. Like, you know, I'm, I'm connecting and kind of creating these experiences. And it's, it's nice to know that it happens and people can get behind the idea and, uh, and really, you know, be responsible for this idea moving on and, and then being introduced to the wider, you know, sort of consumer. Um, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome and, and very heartening for sure. Um, so as we're getting near the uh, the end of this stream, um, it was funny. Dylan's like, you, we, you, we're going to do it for three hours. I was like, oh, no, we're not going to have to do it for three hours. <laughs> yeah. We're going to do it for an hour. hour. When do we, when do we want to start? I was like, are you going to eight? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it was so funny and then and then nicole's like no we we're not done yet i was like we're not done yet <laughs> which is just fine by me um yeah. uh always a blast um but well, uh, i mean this particular little group of people are like some of my very favorite people in the entire world so yeah. i can't say that i'm i'm you know it is not nice. selfishly uh <laughs> prolonging the time to yeah, enjoy it yeah, yeah i i i'm completely happy but Goodness, in, please. In the streaming business, they call that edging, I think. Uh, oh, no, says, no, they don't. They don't. Dwayne oh, has uh, a much more relevant comment than you. Dwayne <laughs> says, yeah, as per the use, Dwayne, you're always here to save the day as I wander off into the for a little bit longer. I need to duck out for just a second. You, you're, yeah, you're, welcome, you're welcome to duck out. Yeah, um, we'll be here for sure. Yeah. The main, the main difference is that the weird century setting. Um, now, for folks who are listening, real quick, let me just read this. Please help me understand how the Weird Century setting is distinguished from the default setting of other Mythos RPGs, in particular Call of Cthulhu, a game I'm sure we all greatly respect oh, and love. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The short version is that we make stuff up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like the the longer version is that the weird the whole idea of the Weird Century is to have this period that you can kind of play around with the mythos in. And the further it goes, the more you can play around with it. 
And the idea is that the setting is a model for you to do this yourself, to, to riff off on it, right? And our focus, like I said, is not, um, is not to emulate a particular genre necessarily. Uh, and it is not a uh, literary homage. Um, and as I said earlier, that's sort of the two things that you see a lot of Mythos RPGs do and often to great effect. Um, so we don't do either of those things. Instead, we, uh, we've kind of extended things into a general purpose game setting that goes across that period, right? And that means, for example, that I'll take something um, that has come up in a public domain story and I'll go, well, how has it evolved uh, since then? Um, and not just in a speculative sense, because, you know, all fake history eventually has to kind of fall to dramatic convenience, right? Way back early, I was talking about how, like, the whole thing with secret world things is that they're axiomatic. So if you work too hard to justify them, it gets bad. And kind of similarly, um, you have to do the work to move things from a game representation of literature to something that is purpose built for you. So in terms of um, things like that, right, we have the Carter West Agency, which is a PC organization that that you can not just join, but in the weird century, part of the thing is you can be involved in the evolution of it as well. Um, and you also have things like the transition from the cult of, of Dagon to Thalassology, uh, a human potential movement um, that has kind of picked up all of the, uh, all of the things associated uh, with the cult of the deep ones. And, um, and reframed it in, in a modern context. And reframing things in a modern context uh, is also a thing that we do uh, with not just things like the fake history, like the narrative setting, um, but also you know individual creatures um, and situations. So one of the things that, thank you, Stephen. Um, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. No, don't so so one of the things, <laughs> actually, the deep ones are a good example. So one of the things is that, you know, um, a lot of people seem, a lot of people have made a lot of hay about, you know, you know, deep ones are, are made through this like weird interspecies thing that, you know, might be problematic or at the very least icky. So um, <laughs> we don't say that that's not a thing in this game because we don't tell you what you can't do. Um, except that you can't be a bigot. And that's right. They don't have that in here. Yeah. Well, no, there are bigots. You can't officially here. be a bigot. Um, and yeah. you can shoot them. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> but one of the things when it comes to the deep ones specifically, uh, you know, the way if the deep ones have been doing this for long enough and they need people with a particular uh, genetics, latent genetic setup that is going to eventually spread to almost everybody, right? So one of the things we talk about is not just, uh, yeah, and then Steven actually did this too, right? Um, we do allow you um, to, to explore that as a character option. We're not unique for doing that, um, but the idea is that the basis for it uh, is based on extending the fiction into a place that is more flexible, um, that people can work with and, and do what they like with, but without it being just a set of tinker toys. If you know what I mean, there's always a bit of a um, balance you have to make between being kind of tool kitty and being focused, right? So if, if folks are wondering, you know, exactly what we're talking about, here's an example. Um, this is, uh, so that's like that. Those are both. That. None. They're not. You don't. Sorry. The the question was, sorry, if this has already been asked as a potential DM, how much existing Lovecraft mythos do we need to know? Is there enough lore in the book to work uh, with without reading Lovecraft? Yes. There you go. Yeah. yeah and, well, and, that, and that's key. Yeah. yeah. In fact, if you know mythos, it might be false. Yeah, you that's know. right. <laughs> yes. And a that's baked in at the outset, right? I mean, that's right. something you've, you, that, you took great pains, right, Malcolm? And, yeah. Well, some, 
getting back to, to Dwayne's question though, one of the one of the things that distinguishes it is that you know, uh, as well is that we assume that all of the public domain stories are uh, unreliable narration, right? Um, and you know, aside from giving us the freedom to ignore some problematic elements, uh, it also allows us to be a little more creative and more inventive, right? Um, we don't limit ourselves to you know just what a creature in a public domain story did at a particular time and place to figure out what it can do for instance so you know that's a thing nice yeah um that is awesome and i'm wondering real quick um uh the Say their name. I, I, I the the Gengarian, the Gengaring, Gregarians. The, the yes, yes. The, they're so like they're just a happy, jolly, like, <laughs> jolly bug bug filled. Um, you know, uh, I do believe that in our adventure that Ian ran, we ran into one of these. Um, I'm I'm thinking that may be the case, but there's yeah, <laughs> those guys, those guys. <laughs> Um, yeah. So now are these guys, uh, like they're from Canon, uh, from, you know, the, the mythos, they're uh, an interpretation of something nice um, from the, from the original stuff. Uh, Nicole was talking about Adam Clancy earlier and he gave us uh, a hint in fact, with kind of, uh, sussing out our canon. Um, in fact, we probably have a few thank you letters to send out related to that right. kind of thing. A. Scott Glancy. Is it A. Scott Glancy? I don't know why he goes by Adam on Facebook, but uh, yeah, he, he publishes under Scott and his friends oh, know him as well, Scott. Well, whatever. I naturally prefer whatever. Right. It, it shows up as Adam, so you're not wrong. Well, but for those who, uh, who know him as Scott in yeah. his work. Um, yeah. I want to talk about... The other cool thing about unreliable narration, which I kind of yeah. forgot because I went blank when I was answering. Well, in the seven question. minutes we got, why don't you go? In the seven minutes we got. Okay. The other thing is that you can use, you can not only use that um, to change things, but you can also incorporate the actual fiction to various degrees. Um, you may or may not wish to do this, but it means that you can have a setting in which Lovecraftian fiction exists. Uh, <laughs> right. And we actually have that. And it was something I was talking to Troy about earlier, which is that in our description of the Necronomicon, we admit that the uh, thing that is popularly called the Simonomicon, which is the mass market paperback Necronomicon, many of you have seen, does exist in our setting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And there you go. That's great. And uh, Rob, thank you very much. Um, thank you for your for your question. And, um, you know, listen, we've uh, we've been um, working on this for some time. Um, the it's been a blast. People have been really fun by and large, I would say uh, even uh, I would give it a 98 percent of everybody has just been uh, really excited and engaged. And the other percent will get you. We're coming for you. Um, and it'll be, uh, uh, a lot of fun for everyone. Um, I'm going to, uh, stop sharing the stream real quick and just so we can kind of, we can hang out and chat a bit. Oh, Chris, there you go. You get to be, oh, uh, <laughs> how about I do it like this? That way you don't oh. feel so, you know, my um, serpent person persona has been revealed. That's oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I do love that picture, Nicole. That's so great. Um, and people get to see Susie Sue okay. and the clock that I'm certain <laughs> is not right. <laughs> <laughs> that clock hasn't been right since 2004. <laughs> it's all, it will be in meetings. I'll be like, I don't think that's what time it is. <laughs> and Chris is like, there's no. a clock. Well, there's a, not a clock. Uh, those right. hands haven't moved in years, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, where we, uh, just so people are aware of kind of what are the next steps, what happens now that the Kickstarter is going to wrap here in just mere minutes, a handful of them. Um, uh, we, oh, we, geez, still you know, left and then you asked that. I know. I'm waiting to see his head pop back up, but, uh, yeah. but yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. you know, uh, yes. Be uh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. <laughs> yeah, I tried, tried to hustle. I had to, had to feed my family there. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, good eye and good ear. Um, uh, so Templar talk to us about what's next in, uh, in like, you know, two minutes. Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, so there's going to be a bit of a delay for the backer kit. We're not going to release the pledge manager immediately. It is coming uh, as soon as we can, as soon as uh, 
it works out. <laughs> um, but once the uh, the pledge manager goes live, then we'll collect everybody's shipping fees. Uh, you'll get your surveys. Uh, you'll be able to add any additional add-ons that you didn't want to get during the campaign and maybe decided later. Kickstarter is going to collect your fees uh, in just a few minutes uh, for the initial pledge. But uh, if you only pledged a dollar, you'll have another chance to up your pledge to something that actually includes a book if you want it. Uh, otherwise, thank you for your dollar. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, right, yeah. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, and uh, and also I'm we uh, yeah that's that I I mean that's that's most of it. Most people are pretty familiar with how Kickstarter works. If you're a retailer, and we do have quite a few of them. Uh, you, your initial pledge is kind of a placeholder. There will be a specific version of the survey for you. Don't lock in until I can adjust for retailer pricing. Uh, for that, once you've filled out how many copies of the game you want for your store, send me an email to custserve at greenronin.com and I will adjust that for you and then we will charge that. That's right. Yeah. And absolutely. And one of the things to, you know, for us all to remember is that we do this like, you know, nobody knows nothing um, because then we could just talk about all of it. And, uh, and that's great too. And so then the process then as it relates to, to sort of the, the continued evolution of content and all of that and the things, so mm. it's written and all that. And, um, you know, Malcolm, then mm -hmm. we kind of move into a uh, edit editing phase. I mean, we're still, there's still work to be done, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's in editing right now, uh, the core book. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the things we'll be using uh, money for from the Kickstarter is to get more art because we have some art, but it's a big book. So we need yeah. a lot more art. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be happening, um, you know, as the editing is being done and proofreading and all that kind of stuff um, and initial layout. Um, and then eventually that all comes together into a PDF, which is the first thing that backers get. Um, yep. And uh, because this has come up as a question in the comments before, the PDFs uh, for all of the modern age books will go out at the same time as the uh, Cthulhu main book. Uh, ah, uh, great. That's so great. All, all the PDFs well, will go out at once. That's a kit package, right? It, yes, yes. So it looks like we've got about three minutes left. Um, and you know, if you if you pledge um ten thousand dollars, we will mail <laughs> um Malcolm to your home and he yeah. will and he's Canadian shipping, so that's like we're we're in deep on that. That's right. That's a real that's an investment, friends. And uh he'll come to your house and he will um, you know, uh run a uh engagement. Um you know, I'll leave it open ended so we can. You know. <laughs> oh, it's counting down the uh, seconds now, it. you guys. We're on yeah. the. We're oh, the oh, are we? Are we? Uh, 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 another question that comes up a whole lot. Uh, so the PDFs will all be distributed initially through Backer Kit uh, for the first round, but once all of the physical print books have been fulfilled and distributed to people and shipped, uh, I will send out uh, PDF copies to everyone Ooh. via Drive Through RPG as well. So you'll have that in your library. And if any of those PDFs get updated with new versions, new errata, typos corrected, et cetera, you'll have a current copy in your library also. Nice. Nice. And if someone's looking at it and they're like, wait a minute, do you don't spell Cthulhu with a V? Uh -huh. <laughs> one minute. Um, one minute. Yeah. 58. 50, yeah. That's nice. Look at this. Hi. This is exciting. I love it. Um, red. Uh, do you, do we, where do we send them if they're like, hey, I, I noticed a spelling error? I noticed Cust it. surf. Yeah, yeah. Send it. Send it to me. I I have access to uh, the work in progress errata document, <laughs> and I I will add it to that. There you go, friends. That's what you do. So um, you know, or you know, just complain about it online in a deep dark forum somewhere that nobody ever looks at. And uh, okay, if I don't have to look at it. No, <laughs> just yeah. complain online and don't and tell. And that make their way to me eventually, also. Oh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> months and months later, we're getting down. There. That's right. Yeah. Getting, 13, right? 12, 12, 10, 10, 10. Seven. six, two, <laughs> four. Three. I did a different time zone than you guys. <laughs> <laughs> <Yay! Yay! laughs> 
Uh, you folks will have experienced that before us. Um, so I yeah. hope it was uh, exciting. Um, but we did it. Um, and I like you to see the little fireworks and stuff. I never watched that happen before. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Hey, what number um, uh, Kickstarter is this for the team? Oh, I don't know. No, oh, uh, <laughs> I think it's like 5,000th. 10, 11? I don't know. Yeah, are, are we counting... Uh, all of the Chris and Nicole Kickstarters. <laughs> well, they no, were done they on were behalf of Kickstarters. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Those are company. I was responsible for. So three, the first one was uh, 10th anniversary deluxe Heroes Handbook for Mutants and Masterminds, right? And then we did Freeport, and yep. then was Blue Rose next? Blue Rose Age. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then. Thanks, Rob. Wait, I Thank have. you. Thank you, Rob. Uh, yeah, Sentinels, the Expanse, uh, Blue Rose, Lost Citadel, Expanse Dice, um, Lost Citadel, Book of Fiends, yeah, yeah. Uh, Book of Fiends on uh, uh, Game on Tabletop, and then mm -hmm. Blue Rose Adventures Guide, which included the Book of Fiends on Kickstarter. Yep, and then we've done a few. I think a few covers yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. A few works. Yeah, I mean, I love the extra credit, um, and you get it for sure. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I mean, this is fantastic. Um, I love everybody. the The intelligence of the team is just <laughs> is off the charts. Uh, and truly, really, thank you, everybody that was watching live with us for this mm -hmm. entire time. It's um, so fun. Yeah, yeah. like so, nobody made you do it. It wasn't your job awesome. or anything, and you were still here <laughs> with us. I love that. Yeah, you know it's your job. You keep coming back. The comments being a smart ass and then i was like i i should just i, should just, I, I, I will tell you i was like oh what that was fantastic <laughs> so um i've been i've been talking you know uh with templar for some time and saying like you know we should do the troy and templar oh yeah show. no no the idea of being on one of our live streams completely freaks me the hell out yeah you get used to it um you know it's one of those it's true uh, you yeah, do he wears you, know. you down yeah. <laughs> Welcome. How are you feeling? You're looking yeah. like you're oh, done. Me? Are you done? Oh, I'm just uh I'm just crunching some numbers in my head post Kickstarter. Well, I, I will say uh, this. Don't I will do that. As your host, I will say I am done, and I am so yeah. glad yes. that you all hung out. Thank you for uh, for being on stream and doing this thing. It can be a lot of fun, and also it's a lot of work. It's a lot of energy you put out and into the world. And you've been busy today, Troy. Also, Ooh. thank you, Troy, for all you do you. for you. us. Thank Indeed. you for thanking me. I appreciate that. I do. And it's, it's, it's Troy. That's right. It's a labor of love, most uh, assuredly. Um, so with that being said, um, thank you again, everybody. Remember to go uh, over to our YouTube, uh, check out our Twitch, but, you know, give it a like, you know, uh, subscribe, make sure you're subscribing, uh, tickle that bell as you're wanted to do, and uh, you'll get notifications. <laughs> Smash that notification button. Just rock it. Um, but, uh, <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, we love doing this stuff. It is a lot of fun, and it's a great way to connect. And um, your uh, comments, your feedback, your your thumbs up. Um, give us all the thumbs up you got. Um, and uh, if you've got questions or ideas or something that you'd like to uh, talk about, send a note to let's play at greenronin.com. That's not a place to share your your um, customer service woes. Um, you can do that. <laughs> I will ignore them on accident. I will, you know. <laughs> but uh, have happened once or twice. But that's right, you know, so Duke, you are a pro. Duke says, um, see you tomorrow on Thursday agents. Just so the, here's the thing, you're the Thursday agent, Duke. Um, we are we are only the um the uh, entertainers um that uh you know hang out and take your questions. That would be with Owen Casey Stevens. That's tomorrow at two PM. We do it right here in this very same place. We just switch out the meat suits and and uh do the thing. It's it's a lot of fun. We have a blast. I don't know right now uh we've got a couple table a uh, couple ideas on the table for the topic. Um and uh, and we like to keep it fresh. You know, we don't like to do any of that. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. We just don't want to do any of that planning stuff. It kind of ruins the whole experience of a surprise for everyone. Uh, so tune in tomorrow too. That team is going to evolve into agents of agents of Thursd. Oh, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I like that because <laughs> when I hear Chris, Thursd, when I hear Thursd that's agents, the that we were talking about earlier that that's the facial version of the alert. <laughs> that's right. That, that, right. That's it. <laughs> It's time to go. Hey, no, I'm it is. I, I'm going to just real quick. Stop, so I'm going to start. I'm going to stop talking about uh, Thursday agents and say, um, uh, join us tomorrow. We will be um, uh, uh, getting into some interesting stuff. Uh, I'm just not sure if I can 
talk all about it. And I don't want to, I don't want to ruin a surprise. Um, and also I wanted to real quick, thank Stan. Um, Stan's always hanging mm. out doing art and J- so is Jacob Blackman, uh, yep. just good friends, family, truly family, um, uh, to us and, uh, a delight, uh, all the time. And so thank you so much. Um, and, uh, and to our friend, the bear, um, you are welcome. Um, 100% welcome. And with that, I say good night, adieu, and we will see you all tomorrow. Thank you, friends. Have a good evening. Bye.